Last week in Denton, this Jason Mills to Troy Red Wine touchdown pass with nine seconds left in the game gave the North Texas Eagles their first win since they returned to Division I. Today, they'll face the biggest challenge to date, the thunder and lightning backfield of Gerald Moore and James Allen. And the defense led by Chuck Master Cedric Jones. It's North Texas and 10th rank Oklahoma up next. University of North Texas football is brought to you by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, everywhere it flies. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher, who reminds you that what loves company, life the sport, drink it up. By Miller Lite, the official beer of the Eagles. We've got Miller Lite. We're in Texas. Life is good. And by GTE. It's amazing what we can do together. This is Memorial Stadium and Owen Field on the campus of the University of Oklahoma in Norman. The University of North Texas Eagles meet a third Big 8 team in four weeks. Perennial power, the Oklahoma Sooners. Hello again, everybody. I'm Merle Harmon to call the play-by-play -play and to analyze the action is Gil Brand. Well, Gil, the Eagles are coming off that dramatic win over Oregon State of the Pac-10, and that win should be a real confidence builder for them as they go through this tough schedule. Well, Merle, we both watched a lot of games, and when you score two touchdowns and you score one in the last minute and ten seconds with only one timeout driving 70 yards, that's a great drive, and I think it's going to be a great thing for the season for the Eagles. Okay, who are the featured players that we look for today? I think we have to look at Troy Redwine, number 24 wide receiver, who caught three touchdown passes last week against the Oregon State Beavers and, and is really a big play type of player. On defense, I think we have to look at Brent Renfro, number 43, a linebacker, who's a very, very solid football player, made 13 tackles last week against Oregon State, had a great game. And how about the Sooners? Well, I think we need to look at number 25, uh, a young man that they call Lightning, James Allen, a tailback, uh, who has got great potential. He can catch the ball coming out of the backfield, scored 95 touchdowns in high school. Wow. And number 57, Cedric Jones, is a, is a rush type of a uh, defensive end who has a lot of sacks. He had three sacks against SMU last week. He had 13 sacks uh, last year in the Big 8, which is a Big 8 record. You've got to be able to block him to make the offense go. It's the Eagles and the Sooners from Norman, Oklahoma. And we'll return to Owen Field right after these messages. Back at Memorial Stadium in Norman, let's go down to the sideline for a Gatorade report from Ed Budenero. Ed? Thank you very much, Merrill Gill. You know, when you make the move to Division 1A, everything's bigger, better, and faster. The field's faster, the teams are bigger and better. But one thing for sure, when you're in Oklahoma, the, the fans are just less than five feet away. So the problem's going to be for the University of North Texas player to get acclimated to this. And they say that's no problem, especially if you have some familiar smiling faces right here with you. Merrill, back to you. All right, Ed. Well, Gil, as we get ready to kick off here, let's talk about some keys to the game. Merrill, I think that the number one key is you've got to make something happen on first down so you don't have a third and long situation coming up. The second thing, you've got to have some field position from the, from the kicking game as we did last week. If you can do that, then you have a chance to make it a very, very interesting ball game. Against Oklahoma, Oklahoma's going to try to fine-tune their passing game because they realize going into the Big 8, they have to be able to throw better. They're going to have to be able to force turnovers, which they haven't really done this season, and I think they have to score first so they can control the game. Okay, those are the Village Ford keys to the game. Matt Simon and his crew... Uh, on the sideline, ready to go in another battle against a major college force, and that would be the Oklahoma Sooners, who are 10th ranked nationally. And, of course, UNT with a victory over Oregon State of the Pac-10 last week. Very much encouraged. That's Howard Schnellenberger, the new head coach at uh, Oklahoma, but not a new head coach because he built the Miami program, he built the Louisville program, and now he is here in Norman to resurrect the Oklahoma program. About 65,000 here at Memorial Stadium this afternoon. 
It's uh, sort of a dual name, if you will. It's uh, Memorial Stadium and Owen Field. The temperature, 59 degrees. The wind out of the southeast, about 12 miles an hour. It's a very comfortable football afternoon as North Texas will be kicking off. Oklahoma won the toss. Toby Gowen will be kicking off for North Texas, and Gerald Moore is back on about the one-yard line for Oklahoma. Dar uh, Darius Johnson is also back. He's on a, about the 20-yard line, as Oklahoma has four deep men. Here's the kickoff from the 35, a line drive shot that is going to bounce into the end zone. So there will be no run back by Gerald Moore, and Oklahoma will take the ball at its own 20-yard line as Eric Moore comes in to quarterback the Sooners. He is out of Dallas Carter High School. This is what he has done this year. 251 yards, 18 out of 40. He will be supported with uh, backs and receivers of great quality. In fact, there's another Moore in the backfield. Gerald Moore, Jawan Penny is a wideout, can really fly. P.J. Mills also a lot of speed. This team is built on speed. And the offensive line uh, up there for... Oklahoma, you'll see a lot from J.R. Conrad on that right side, along with Joe Corallo, as Eric Moore goes to the air, going for the bomb on the first pitch, and it's shot all the way down to the 37-yard line of the University of North Texas by P.J. Mills, number four, the junior out of Portsmouth, Virginia. So Oklahoma wastes no time in going for the long one. Merle on this particular play, he just runs kind of a streak route and breaks it off to the inside. They get very, very good pass protection here, and he has all day to throw the ball, and he throws it into the middle. He's got single covers on the on the corner there, and it's a big 43-yard pass play. Avery Wright had the corner coverage. Oklahoma first down on the 37-yard line of the Eagles. Sooners in possession. They go to the run with Gerald Moore, number seven. He tries to cut back and is get, going to be thrown for a loss at about the 39-yard line by the Eagles. And it was uh, Wright who gave up that big pass, who came up with a big tackle. Let's took a, take a look now at the defensive alignment for the Eagles. On the front, Philip Armour, a freshman who is really coming on. Shane McLaughlin, the uh, senior and a very experienced guy. And, of course, Willis Hudson, outstanding. Brett Renfro, great week last week. Those are the linebackers. And the defensive backs, Washington, will be the veteran back there. Eric Allen going up the middle. It is intercepted about the 24-yard line and going to be brought back to the 35-yard line. The interception made, I think, by, let me double check here. It was well, OG the, Gibson. Well, what they're trying to do here is run a turn-in route. And the, and the corner plays it very well. It, he, he, he looks right at the receiver, the corner. It's back right after he's thrown behind him is what happened. Now, Merle, here's a place where I think you start off with a passing play. You come in with two tight ends, and, and you come in with some strange formation and try to run a quick hitch or something like that to just see how these people are going to react to you. Bo Harrison is a single setback. Jason Mills, the quarterback for UNT. He will go to the air, throws a uh, quick pass into Brian Smith. Just a little bit of a slant at the 45-yard line brought down by Malin Wesley. And it's again to the, about the 45-yard line. Jason Mills, the quarterback, the sophomore from Denton. There are the numbers on him. Five touchdowns, ten interceptions so far this year. Just a sophomore. The backs and receivers, Harrison, will be very busy. And, uh, of course, Troy, red wine, three touchdowns a week ago. This is the offensive line. Jeff Bowles doing a fine job anchoring the line at center. Some kind of misdirection on a running play here, I think, Merle, is what you'll see. Because they're trying to find out what Oklahoma is going to cover and how they're going to cover it. So they pick up the first down in the first pass of the ball game. And now they go to the run with Bo Harrison, and he gets a couple, and that's about it. Let's look at the offense, the defensive line now for Oklahoma with uh, the defensive front four. And Cedric Jones, you'll see a lot of him today, number 57 outstanding player. The linebackers are very quick. In fact, they uh, really go to the hole in a hurry. DeQuazy had a great week uh, last week. Simpson is very strong out there. And we have an injured player on the field right now. I believe it's Arthur Atkins. Here are the defensive backs. And we have play stopped by the injured Sooner at the 45-yard line. Arthur Atkins, who is a senior out of Houston, Texas. The right tackle on the defensive unit. It'll be second down and about 10. They got just a little bit on that last play. 
So that gets uh, Howard Schnellenberger on the sideline. Where's his pipe, though, Gil? <laughs> That's the first time I've seen him without a pipe. I think his wife, Beverly, carries it for him <laughs> during the game. <laughs> Beverly's usually down there on the sideline directing traffic and leading cheers. I tell you, she is uh, some special lady. So Howard Schnellenberger, he didn't have to change colors, though. He came from the Louisville Cardinals, and uh, I'm, that's, I don't think it's a Cardinal jacket. I think that's a Sooner red. Well, Howard's done a great job. He's been a great coach. Okay, here come the Eagles split out wide to the left of Troy Redwine. Three wide outs on the left side, and into a spread formation is Jason Mills out of the shotgun, takes the snap, now pitches forward to... The halfback coming in, that's Bo Harrison, and he gets up to about the midfield stripe and crosses into Oklahoma Territory at the 49. You know what Brought down by Ivy, the middle linebacker, number 43. What they're trying to do here is, is trick the middle linebacker. He's a freshman middle linebacker, and what they're trying to do is do some things to, to make him think for a minute, and, and they did a good job. It's the old Utah shuffle passes that they call it. If it's, if it's dropped, it's an incomplete pass. Third down, about four. Mills on the quarterback draw has the first down and more inside the 40-yard line of the Sooners to almost the 38-yard line. Another first down. Broderick Simpson, number 51, the weak side linebacker from Hillcrest High School in Dallas, making the stop for the Sooners. This is just a, a quarterback draw, it is, and what they've done is they, number 43, Ivy, has completely run himself out of the play, uh, and that's what happens is when you have somebody that hasn't played before, hasn't seen a lot of things, uh, it's, uh, it's a good play to run. Very good drive here so far. Mills gets 13 yards on that run. It is first down inside the OU 40. Mills, this is Bo Harrison, and Harrison uh, gets to about the 37-yard line where Kent uh, Brent uh, DeQuazy makes the tackle, number 47. Merle, it's very, very hard to run against this team. It was really a good hole. They had a good hole there, but the linebackers play so good and so fast, and even though they play about five yards off the ball, they just recognize the play and come up and meet it in the hole. So it's tough to get a, hard, a big play off of this team. Mills in the shotgun again. He has Virtus McQuint, uh, McKinney wide to the right side. And Redwine is to the near side. Mills throwing on the run, completing it to Smith, number nine. And Smith has another first down inside the Oklahoma 25-yard line. But a flag was dropped back on the 40, and that probably indicates a holding penalty against UNT. I think they called a holding penalty on the left tackle against uh, number 57, Jones, on that particular play. So another first down possibility is negated. And we'll get the call from Terry Turlington, the referee from Kennett, Missouri, down in the Bootio country. No score, first quarter. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty, spot of the foul, repeat second down. Merle, it's very hard to block Jones one-on-one. -on -one. If you notice, they came out to start the game with a double tight end to try to protect the left tackle, but that time there wasn't a tight end in there, and he had a single block Jones. Toby Colvin in number four has come in to replace Brian Smith as a wideout. Single setback. It is second down, 22 for North Texas. A screen coming out to the left side. Doesn't go anyplace, so as Darius Johnson got Coleman just as he caught that ball. He may have picked up a yard. We'll give him a yard on the play. Merle, what a lot of times you see plays like this that they're trying to set up something else with it. And and uh, you never know. It might be a, a passing play, as an example, of where they throw a quick pass out there and what they, they call a flanker screen pass. This time, Bo Harrison goes way wide to the right. There are no running backs on third down and about 20. The ball inside the 50 in Oklahoma Territory. Jason Mills throwing. Virtus McKinney catching. And he is down to the 39, way short of a first down. Broderick Simpson, the weak side linebacker from Dallas Hillcrest on the tackle. And so that stops the drive with a fourth down and 11 coming up for North Texas. Merle, on that particular play, Waddle, the left tackle, did a very, very good job blocking Jones. 
This is where you have to kick one dead on about the five-yard line and get field position like they did last week against Oregon State. Kobe Golan with a 43-plus average will punt for the first time today, and P.J. Mills, number four, single safety, booms it high, and Mills uh, is going to let it go. I thought he was going to let it go into the end zone, but didn't go. And so the ball is down by North Texas at about the one-yard line. Well, that's a, that's a great alert play by the special teams when you go down there and recover that ball down on the one-yard line like that. No score first quarter, and that beautiful punt by Toby Gowen pinned Oklahoma down on its own one-yard line. And Gil Brandt talked about the kicking game. And before we got underway today is Oklahoma with Eric Mills throwing out of the end zone. The pass is incomplete, dropped by Alexander, number 80, Stephen Alexander, the tight end. Well, Stephen Alexander is a, a great athlete. He won the Oklahoma State High Jump Championship he, in track. He was a six foot eight high jumper. So they've got great athletes playing on this team. But you know, maybe the same thing will happen as happened last week when North Texas kicked it dead on the one yard line and has subsequently fumbled and recovered on about the 11 or 12 yard line. Second down 10 on the Oklahoma one. Chuck Langston over the ball. Eric Moore, the quarterback, fumbles in the end zone. It's pitched out and recovered by UNT. They're calling it a safety, however. He cannot do that uh, once the ball is down. You cannot punt, push it out like that. But you know, Merle, we, hey, we get a second chance and they're step. kicking from the 20 yard line now. And a safety so, as a result of the fumble. Last week, we saw two safeties that uh, UNT picked up and they opened the scoring today with a safety. It looks like uh, the, the quarterback just misses a hand on it. That he just pulled away from the center too fast and was trying to hand the ball off to Allen. Allen did something was smart, but it's illegal. You cannot, you cannot pitch it forward like that. You can always try. <laughs> you can always try. You know, just That's like what he was doing. Dave Casper did, and they changed the rule on it. <laughs> the holy roller play, I guess they called it. So the Eagles take a 2 to nothing lead against the Sooners in the first quarter with 9.46 left to go in this period. Matt Simon and his uh, young North uh, Texas Eagles who have now faced three big uh, eight opponents, soon to become the Big 12, facing the third Big 8 opponent today and one Pac-10 opponent. Well, you know, there's a lot of history to this Oklahoma program. This is their 100th year of football, and they are the fourth winningest team in college football behind Notre Dame, Alabama, Michigan. I think they've won 670 games approximately, which means you're winning almost seven games a season. And that, that that's phenomenal, and that's a tribute to uh, this university and what they've done. Brian Lewis will punt. And he will, of course, the... This is a young man from St. George, Utah, that was probably the most highly recruited kicker in the country last year, uh, is uh, what he is. And he's uh, both a punter and a place kicker. Very, very good kicker. Well, that'll make him a prime candidate for the pros. That'll give him an extra spot of the roster. Here's a little squib kick going up uh, and out of bounds about the 48-yard line. Boy, what happened on that one? Well, I think he was a little shaky on that one. And somehow he, he shanked that ball. He really did. And it turned out to be nothing more than a squib kick. Well, you know, sometimes uh, people are used to being pressured on a kick like that, and you just take too much time and you don't drop the ball right. I don't know what happened there, but a bad drop will cause a kick like that. And you can see what's going on on the Oklahoma sideline right now. This man is unhappy. UNT scoring first on a safety and then on the free kick the ball went out of bounds on the 48 yard line in Oklahoma Territory and here come the Eagles again led by Jason Mills the sophomore quarterback out of Denton Troy Redwine is 34 you saw him in the picture Brian Waters a tight end sets on the right side uh, Tyrison off the right tackle brought down at about the 42 and you know, that's a big play. again. That's a big play. DeQuazy is going to make a lot of tackles. Those two of those linebackers, DeQuazy and Simpson, are going to make a lot of tackles. But that's a big play because it's second and three. Anytime you make over five on first down against Oklahoma, you're in pretty good field position. Second down coming up. Red wine wide to the left side. Coylan Grimes is now wide to the right, number 85. Shotgun. Swing. 
Harrison. Not much. May have lost a yard. Just a little screen pass, actually, that they try to throw out here to Harrison and the two linemen release. Uh, and I think what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of screens today, or a lot of different screens. I think you'll see a tight end screen, a, a flanker screen, uh, to try to attack this defense and make them stay at home a little bit. Larry Bush stayed at home on that last one. He's the very good corner. Quarterback. Not a big guy, but uh, he plays his position very well. The senior from Ada, Oklahoma, about 5'9", 180 or so. Three wide outs to the left, one split right. No running back. Third down. No. That's, we may see a flag, and we will. Interference penalty. And that was the rover back, Rod Henderson, number 17, who got all tied up with Brian Waters, number 40. It looked like he had him beaten on. Uh, Jones is signaling that it's, a, it's an offensive push-off. So we'll have to wait and see what they call here. It's an uh, offensive push-off. Well, we'll give you the judgment on that one when you see the replay. Here, here's the quarterback, Mills, throwing the ball. And... Yeah, he does push off. Number 40 pushes off. The tight end pushes off there. That That is a... Uh, yes, he did. There's no question That's about that. Very good call the by the official. Line, fourth down. But see, Oklahoma doesn't want to give uh, UNT another shot at it, so they decline the penalty, bringing up the fourth down on the 43-yard line in a punting situation for North Texas as Toby Gowen comes in to do the punting. Well, Merle, you don't ever want to give a team another chance uh, on third down, ex unless they're in field goal range and it's going to determine the game, because otherwise, make them punt the ball. P.J. Mills is back as a single deep back or single safety, if you will, as Toby Gowen will do the kicking. The junior from Jacksonville, Texas, gets it away. And this time, he can't get it out of bounds. It goes into the end zone, and the ball will be brought to the 20. And that's where the Sooners will put their offensive unit on the field. A 43-yard punt. The Eagles lead 2 to nothing, and we'll be back after this. North Texas 2 to nothing over Oklahoma on that uh, safety with 9.46 to go in the first quarter. And we're down to 8.11. Oklahoma has taken over after UNT punted. And there are wideouts on each side of the field for the Sooners. The pitch goes to Gerald Moore, and Moore is hit behind the line by Marcellus Hill, number 45. Matt Simon, in his second year as the head coach of UNT, has really started to build a program. Matt uh, spent 10 years with uh, Don James out in Washington, working with the offense and the quarterbacks out there. And of course, has designed some very intriguing offensive patterns for defensive coaches to worry about. He really has. A lot of, lot of formations that you have to defense. Second down. Oklahoma to the run. A good reaction by the defense as James Allen, number 25, is brought down by Terry Watson, 29, the strong safety, at about the 23-yard line where it becomes third down for the Sooners and approximately seven yards to go. What they've done here is they, they've put, they've gone to a little different defense, of, uh, uh, which is their nickel package that they have in there right now. Wide outs to the left for Oklahoma. Eric Moore rolling left, looking to throw, trying to get to the sideline, and is going to be knocked out of bounds. Short of the first down at about the 28-yard line. Willis... Hudson followed that play all the way across the field for the tackle. Well, which Willis Hudson plays hard and plays fast. He's a very, very good football player. Willis Hudson is always involved, especially in backside plays is where he's involved in, and this is where he made a great play here. And Lorenzo Washington was a part of it, too. The strong safety, number 39. Lorenzo Washington played very well last week. He made a lot of big plays last week, but Willis Hudson is a football player, I'll tell you that. Brian Lewis, number 82, will do the punting for Oklahoma, and fourth down to one flag go down all over the place. And if that penalty is against UNT, that would really hurt because they had stopped the Sooners. Dead ball foul. Ball start. Ball start. Repeat fourth down. Ball start Oklahoma, so they'll kick with a fourth and six. Merle, the only time, that if, if, if the defense would have been offside, they would have let the play continue uh, is what happened. So when the offense jumps or has motion, uh, then it's, uh, it's a dead play. And conversely... 
sometimes there's a free play with the offense. Right. And that, they, which and is the a court, big, big and they better right. get, Yeah, the offense had better be alert to that. And they are, normally. Fourth down, six. Brian Lewis boots this one downfield where Brian Smith fair catches it on the 40-yard line. So, again, the Eagles have good field position because of the punting game, Gil. No question about it. it uh, it's a 36-yard punt and no return. Sterling Guest got a real good push up the middle on this particular play. He, he, he didn't try to block it, but he made Lewis kick the ball. And I think that what they're doing is they realize Lewis is an inexperienced player. He's a true freshman. And all of a sudden, he's out there kicking uh, before 65,000 people. And it's a little different than kicking at St. George, Utah. So Jason Mills brings the offense on the field once again for the Eagles, who lead 2 to nothing. Arthur Atkins, the Oklahoma deep, or defensive tackle that you saw uh, assisted off the field a few minutes ago, is out of the game with a knee injury. He has been replaced by Greg Kelly. The pass completed. Brian Waters tied in inside the 45 in Oklahoma Territory to near the 42-yard line. This... Brian Waters is the tight end, lines up here, and he just slips off the line of scrimmage is what he does. They've got two men flanked out wide. Here he comes off the line of scrimmage and, and just splits the two backs. And if you notice, number 43, the, the linebacker that we've been talking about, Ivy, is just slow getting there to make the play. So they're really exploiting Ivy right now. Gain of 18 yards, puts the ball to the 42 of the Sooners. UNT ahead by a score of 2-0 here in the first quarter. The run is stopped. As Bo Harrison hits a stone wall of Sooner defensive lineman for a loss at about the 44-yard line. And DeQuazy, uh, the linebacker, those linebackers make a lot of plays, DeQuazy and Simpson. And, and I think that they really uh, miss their regular middle linebacker here today, uh, Peters, who has uh, been suspended for one game. Kelly Gregg, 97, uh, who replaced Atkins, a freshman assisting on the tackle. It is second down 12 for UNT. We have six minutes to go in the first quarter in Norman, Oklahoma. Incomplete to Troy Redwine, who caught three touch touchdown passes last week from Jason Mills. You know, if Mills has a problem, he has a problem throwing to his left a little bit, and he's not the most accurate passer, but this will come with time because that was a big play right there. Boy, you hit that play. Mills is wide open. Not, excuse me, Redwine is wide open. So it is a second down, or third down, rather. DeAndre Mason has come in now and is split way out wide to the right side on third down and 12. Mills went after it. I believe Mills came up with it. But he fumbled and recovered back on his own 43. Well, Jones is one sack away, uh, one half a sack away from being the all-time leader in sacks. Jones just comes right around. The, the, there's no tight end in the game, and 78 to tackle Waddle just can't block him. He makes an inside move, an inside release, and uh, and Mills makes a great play just to catch the ball or recover the ball, I should say. Fourth down, 22. Going to punt and does, and downfield P.J. Mills takes it on his own one-yard line and breaks it. He can't break a tackle. He almost broke that tackle to get to the near sideline at about the four, and he was brought down real quick like by Little John. Well, Howard is going to have something to say to, to the receiver on this play because you usually stand at the 10-yard line and don't back up. You hope it's going to go into the end zone. Again, this gives uh, the Eagles great field position, and this is what you need. 56-yard punt. It's kind of reminiscent of a Kick last week against Oregon State. Philip Littlejohn downfield in the coverage. Terrence Brown has now come in as a wide receiver. Terrence Brown is a former quarterback. Just remember that. He, he played quarterback for two years here, so you never, never uh, forget about possibly a flank or reverse type of pass. The pitch and the run doesn't go. That defense led by Marcellus Hill, number 45, the sophomore linebacker from Arlington Heights High School in Fort Worth, makes the tackle. I'll tell you what, this young man came on the field last week against Oregon State and just impressed the coaches enough that they 
the head confidence to start him today with Jackson out. You know, to our viewers and our fans out there, I think there's one thing we all need to think about. There's a lot of young players playing for the Eagles, which should help this team down the road. A loss of one, second down, 11. That run by Jeff Frazier gets out across the five to the seven and Willis Hudson, 56, out of Marshall, Texas, and Justin Ray, number 51, the middle linebacker from Cleburne, on the tackle. Well, the Sooners have 41 players from the state of Texas on their roster, including 12 that start, four on offense and eight on defense. So it's hopefully that uh, we can uh, keep some of those players in Denton. Or come up to Oklahoma and <laughs> steal some of theirs. Down there. <laughs> Third down, seven for the Sooners. Slot left, wide left, shotgun. Al in the end zone, throwing. Incomplete. Had the man open, Gerald Moore, for what would have been a first down, but the pass kind of floated, was a little bit high, and the wind coming out of the south was kind of blowing that ball around. Yeah, you know, you need to throw that ball tough into the wind because there's a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. But this is a play they ran against SMU very successfully last week. The only difference is they hit number 25 coming out of the backfield on that shotgun formation. Brian Lewis will kick out of his end zone, and Brian Smith is in Oklahoma Territory at the 40 to receive. Remember, the wind is coming out of the south, which makes it tough for the kicker. And let's see if he gets it out there. He does. They nail the kicker, and the flag goes down. So Oklahoma's going to keep the football. They went for the block of the end zone. Well, Merle, this is an interesting call here now. Is it roughing the kicker or running into the kicker? See, because if it's running into the kicker, it's only a five-yard penalty, and it's not an automatic first down. Uh, let's see what it's, it's going to be, a five or a 15. This is what you have to worry about right here. 83 comes through there, and if he touches the ball, I think that should be uh, running into the kicker, not roughing the kicker, because it doesn't look to me as though it was a, a uh, premeditated foul. Roughing he, the kicker. <laughs> first down. I just goes to show you what we know. <laughs> but uh, that, that's a very, very tough call right there, because as you look at it on the replay, it, it didn't look like he intentionally uh, tried to uh, run into the kicker, which is what the roughing the kicker penalty is supposed to be, as opposed to legitimately trying to block it. Don't misunderstand what I'm going to say here, fans, but if, if I could read Matt Simon's mind then, he would have said, home team call. And it happens sometimes. Well, big eight call. <laughs> Oklahoma still in possession. Naked reverse going the other way with the quarterback. Going out of bounds somewhere around the 35, 36 yard line, and that probably is good enough for a first down. Marcellus Hill, 45, and Willis Hudson, 56, ran him out of there. Eric Moore has the capacity to make a lot of big plays. He was a very good quarterback in high school at Dallas Carter High School and made a lot of big plays there. He's got a lot of speed. He's a red shirt freshman. Moore is one out of four with one interception so far. Eric Moore is, is uh, as we talked to Coach Nellenberg yesterday, he felt that he really has a future here at uh, at Oklahoma. First down, OU 36. OU trailing two to nothing. First quarter. Straight ahead. Doesn't get much on that one with Jerry Moore, Gerald Moore, carrying for maybe a couple of yards. That's Thunder right running the ball. Brett Renfro, 43 who had an outstanding game against Oregon State. You know, we talked about uh, Allen having 95 touchdowns in high school. Uh, uh, Moore had 69 touchdowns in high school. That's thunder and lightning. <laughs> that is. Second down for Oklahoma, about eight. Eric Moore. Complete over the middle to the tight end, Stephen Alexander. Short of a first down, however, at about the 42, maybe the 43, Brett Renfro. It's about third and two, I think, is what it is. Renfro made another tackle. Eric Moore from Carter High School in Dallas. 18 out of 40 coming into this game, 251 yards. He's rushed for 85. Slot left, I. Tailback. Well, I tell you, they, the running game for Oklahoma is not working at all. And they ran to the left side, which is Stamps' side, who's probably their best uh, best offensive lineman. The Eagles are playing very, very good on defense. Lorenzo Washington, the strong safety 
came up to lead the charge on that one against Jeff Frazier. You know, you worry a little bit about Washington coming up to make the play because sooner or later they're going to try to run some type of play pass on them on a third and two or third and three situation. Brian Lewis will kick. Brian Smith is deep for UNT. We have a minute 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Eagles lead two to nothing. Fair catch. And a flag goes down. The guy was trying to get his balance. I, I can't believe they're going to call a penalty unless it's against Oklahoma for not giving him six yards. Uh, you know, he may have, he may call a penalty for advancing the ball uh, is what he may have called on it. You know, the, 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 on this kick, the wind kind of holds the ball up. Smith has very, very good hands. Now he catches the ball right here. And, and, you know, boy, that's a that's a real judgment call oh, if he man. calls out a five-yard penalty for advancing the ball. Non-contact, kick-catch interference on the kicking team. Oh, so it's five the yard penalty, first down. See, they didn't give him the six yards. We get five and they get 15. <laughs> <laughs> Has a 31-yard punt uh, with no return on it. A minute 40 to go in the first quarter here in Norman. And with UNT leading two to nothing, back after these messages from your local station. Oklahoma State, nothing. About 65,000 on hand on a sunny afternoon in Norman, Oklahoma. I'm Merle Harmon along with Gil Brandt and Ed Budinero and Coach Howard Schnellenberger paces the sideline. He's going to be pacing like a tiger if he doesn't get that offense going. And the fans are, are going to be after him. The first and 10 for UNT, 33-yard line. Jason Mills to throw. Jason's going to eat the ball at the 28. Cedric Jones, number 57. Well, Kelly Gregg, 97, were there to get him, and that was all right. He's learning now. Right. What happens here is is uh, that Jones either tied or broke a all-time uh, uh, record for sacks. I'm not sure if they give him a half a sack or a whole sack on that particular play. Loss of three. It'll be second down and 13. But uh, Jason Mills didn't panic. He saw that uh, he wasn't going to go any place. Just held on to the ball. Didn't try to dump it or lose it. That's experience starting to show a little bit. Jason, quarterback draw. Oh, good read there by the defensive lineman for Oklahoma. And maybe a yard, but that's all on that play. Sterling Lucky, 56, uh, who is a junior from Harvey, Illinois, on the tackle. They are so quick and so fast. Here's the, the end just comes right down. Uh, he, he got inside the right tackle, and he just comes down and, and makes the play. The, the tackle has to push him outside on that particular play. So back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Third down, 13. Shotgun for UNT. 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Mill swings it to Harrison, and that doesn't work either. Merle, do you take a timeout here to punt with the wind? I would... Uh, want to have that advantage five seconds to go they're going to let it a, roll out though apparently that's a great advantage to have being able to punt with the wind so we have reached the end of the first quarter and here in norman a little bit of a shock going on north texas to oklahoma nothing today's game is being brought to you in part by gte and by Miller Lite. Second quarter coming up in Norman, Oklahoma. Merle Herman and Gil Brandt and Ed Budinero with you. And we have a punting situation for Toby Gowen, who will now find out what it's like to kick into about a 15 mile an hour win. P.J. Mills is back. Gowen puts it high in the air, gets a pretty good kick away. And P.J. Mills feels it on the Oklahoma 25 to the 30. Flags go down all over the place. Call the clip there. As he gets to the 33. P.J. Mills on the return. Flags down. Duke Lamb made the tackle. And so the Sooners a bit frustrated here as 
They have not been able to get the offense going. A 46-yard kick into that win, an eight-yard return. Now that's a very good kick because there's about a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind up there. And I tell you, when you get the ball to turn over like he did, uh, then it's really going to take off and go. Clock in the back on the return team. 10 yard penalty. Spot of the foul. First down. It, it, it's very easy to block people in the back. Here's number 72, I believe it is, uh, or 22, that blocks him in the back there, and uh, and it just sets him back 15 yards, which is a very, very good thing for the Eagles. At the 18-yard line of Oklahoma, first and 10 for the Sooners. Moore and Allen are in the eye for Eric Moore. Incomplete. Great defensive coverage by Calvin Davis, number 37, the freshman from Greenville, intended for Stephen Alexander. This is a, a, a excellent coverage, and, and, and I'll tell you what, he's playing the ball. As long as you're playing the ball, they're not going to call pass interference. You see him, he's playing the ball, he plays it with his left hand, and that, 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 when that particular play, they won't call pass interference. Second down, 10 on the 18-yard line of Oklahoma. Eric Moore, two out of six, 48 yards. Goes to the run, and that works for about four yards, possibly. Allen, the ball carrier, and Renfro on the defensive play. Merle, number 68 uh, for the Sooners, is a offensive guard by the name of Joe Corolla. His dad played at Notre Dame and then played for about 12 years with the Los Angeles Rams, and I remember this young man growing up. Uh, we used to see him at training camp, and he was about five or six years old with Father Joe. He grew up, though, didn't he? 277 <laughs> pounds? <laughs> Eric Allen out of the shotgun, hit behind the line, breaks the tackle, but still can't get away from the white church, led by, guess who? Willis Hudson, number 56. And also... Anthony Colvin. Let's take a look at the GTE first quarter statistics. Merle, Merle, I don't know of a time that we've played that we've had time of possession in our favor. And, and you know, uh, the one big pass play was really the only thing that, uh, that went against us. So it's been a very, very good first quarter for the Eagles. Well, it's three and out again for the Sooners. Brian Smith is back deep to take the punt from Brian Lewis. He'll be kicking with the wind to his back this time. They go for the block, but don't get it. Brian Smith takes the ball of the 35, comes to the near side, gets away from one tackler, but there's about six or seven red shirts down the field. This is a one thing that I remember about Oklahoma. Boy, they gang tackle at the 38-yard line. The Eagles will have the ball, and we have a timeout with the Eagles leading two to nothing. Well, Gil, this is not the only game going on here on the campus today, but there are not too many people watching that one. Our crew must be in Australia. <laughs> the rugby game. Well, I'll tell you, that's tough contact, though. Okay, UNT's ball at its own 30, 38-yard line. Jason Mills looking, going to run now. And goes out of bounds at the 40. Good move. He's, tell you what, he's coming along with the experience. Larry Bush, 31. Ran him out of bounds. Merle, they had a double tight end situation in there, and I think what we're going to see off this double tight end situation, they're going to set up a screen to number 40. You know, it's been a play that has been open, and they, they, they ran it very well against Kansas, if you remember, for a big, for a big play. And I, I just feel that this is a play that they're trying to set up here. Jason Mills brings the Eagles up to the line of scrimmage with a 2 to nothing lead. Troy Redwine wide to the left. Brian Waters in motion. Bo Harrison popped at the 41-yard line. And this is a situation you don't want to get into. It's a third and seven situation, a third and eight situation. And, and what happens is they're taking the linebacker out and they bring a defensive back in there. And it makes it very, very hard uh, to, uh, to uh, run against this particular thing. And it also makes it very hard to pass because it's highly susceptible to more interceptions is what it is. Third down, seven. Red wine goes wide to the left side. No running back in the set position right now. Third and seven. Mills under a rush. A tackle for a loss at the 31. That was a coverage sack right there because everybody was covered. 
there just uh, was no place for him to throw it. And uh, rather than throw it like he has been in some games and get good field position for the opponent, he held on to it, and hopefully we can get another good punt out of Toby Goins. Rod Manuel, number 85, getting congratulations for his teammates for that fine defensive play, a loss of 10 yards, and it's fourth and 17. And Goin is in to do the kicking again, and P.J. Mills is back to receive the kick at the Oklahoma 25-yard line. Goin hangs it very high. Mills calling for the fair catch and fields it at the 33 of Oklahoma. And that's where the Sooners will put it in play with the offensive unit to kick the 35 yards and no return. And Goin put that ball high in the air. Good hang time. Let the, let the special teams get down the field. Special team, that is. 11.50 to go in the first half. Two to nothing. Eagles. Do you think we can make some kind of a deal that we'll just quit playing right now? <laughs> Take it home at two to nothing? Well, I'll tell you what. If, if Oklahoma gets the lead, Howard Schnellenberg will probably settle to let it end right there with the lead. No, go ahead with it. A long way to go. Moore and Allen with the deep back. Tailback. Allen. Again, the running game is just not working because Brett Renfro Justin and Armour made partners. a good play there. And yeah, Philip Armour. Philip is a freshman from Denton. I say Justin Armour. Justin Armour it was a uh, tight end at Stanford. What happens is when you grade these players for the National Football League in the draft, you think about Armour, and, and, and you know what happens is first thing, Justin Armour. So I apologize for calling him the first wrong, first name incorrectly. Well, I'm really working on not using another guy's name who was red wine that was very big in the Big Eight. <laughs> right. <laughs> we know where he was from. Right. Second down. And let's take a look at Philip Armour on this last play. It, it looks like happens. it's a trap here is what it is. Here comes Stamps pulling around and just, uh, oh, I tell you, he just really, yeah. Got his, I think he's going to have a headache tomorrow and Monday probably. Got his head jammed. Let's and hope that's that Tim it's... McLean, the trainer out there in the brown sweater attending him. If there's a place that the Eagles cannot afford to lose anybody. It's at defensive line. You know, most everybody in the country suffers from not having enough defensive linemen because they're looking for big guys, fast guys, and unfortunately, they've got a bunch bro uh, hurt. We have an, an official timeout now, but the Eagles leading two to nothing. 11:32 to go in the first half. The good news is Philip Armour is okay. He ran off the field. And they've got a little ice pack uh, on his neck right now. It is second down 12 for Oklahoma's res resume play. Eric Moore. Willis Hudson again. I'll tell you. Willis that. Hudson made the, made the sack here. This defensive unit has just been phenomenal. And another 13, this time a 13-yard loss. I started to say another loss, but this one was a big one, and it's third and 19 coming up. And, and Merle, I'll tell you what, he's making the play against Stamps, who is a very, very good football player. He's a top pro prospect. So when you make a play against that type of player, that's really something special. Stamps is number 76, a 292-pound tackle from Houston. Third down, 19 for Oklahoma at the 22-yard line of the Sooners. Eric Moore under the screen. Throws a screen. He's got blockers out there this time. And, but the defense recovers very well. Gerald Moore caught that ball, but he's going to be short of a first down. They had that screen set very well. Let's go down to Ed Budanero for the injury report. Ed? Thank you very much, Merrill. The injury to uh, freshman Philip Armour from Denton High, he had a, what's commonly referred to as a steer. They were just being very careful with him to make sure that it wasn't a real bad neck injury, but he's okay, and he'll be back in the game. Back up to you, Merrill. Merrill, this is a, a play where they have that double screen. You know, it's a fake screen left, fake screen right, and this time they threw it to the right. They they played tried that play against uh, SMU last week, and it was a successful play. Fourth down and five with a punting unit. And Brian Lewis to kick it with the wind to his back. Sends an end over end, sort of line drive kick down the field. Takes a bounce coming back up, and the Sooners will recover, or rather will cover it, on the 21-yard line. And that's where the Eagles will put it in play. A 42-yard kick and no return. Now let's check the Dr. Pepper scoreboard. 
and Notre Dame has come back to take a 27 to 20 lead over Texas after Texas had gone ahead 20 to 7 or 19 I believe it was Nebraska shutting out Pacific and Virginia rolling over Clemson in Death Valley for Clemson this year. I don't think uh, I don't think Virginia has ever won in, at, at Death Valley. First and ten on the 21 of UNT. Eagles lead two to nothing in Norman, Oklahoma. Swing to Harrison. That's about a four-yard pickup there on that little short play, which is. Uh, which is all right. It's it's uh, it, it's second and six, and you can get four and five on first down. You're in business. Rod Henderson and Brent DeQuazy making the stop for Oklahoma. Gain of three on the play. Now Brian Smith, number nine, comes into the huddle and brings the play in to Jason Mills. Curtis McKinney going wide to the left side, along with Bo Harrison, who flanks all the way to the top of your screen. Shotgun. They really have the matchup they want over on the left side. Quarterback draw, flags go down. Loss on the play. Broderick Simpson, 51 on the tackle. Had 12 of them last week against SMU. We were talking to Howard Schnellenberger yesterday, and he said he thought that he was the best athlete that he had on defense. And I'll tell you what, there's 11 good athletes out there, but when you say the best, that really means something special. But he really moves around. I think he's a local boy. I think he's from Norman, Oklahoma is where he's from. Uh, Hillcrest and uh, Oh, it's Hillcrest. Dallas. He's a Dallas player. Yeah. Hey, we're on the road this week, Gil. <laughs> <laughs> it was sure nice to be at home last week, though. Wasn't it? Yeah, well, we don't get to do that very often this year, though. Well, I hope Illegal every... formation. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage on the offense. Third down. Penalty is declined. They're calling that penalty a lock this year because the tackles are trying to back off the line to, to pick up the uh, rushers is what they're trying is what they're doing and so they call it as only six men on the line of scrimmage. They're even doing it in the pros too. Oh they? yeah, well they they allow it a little bit more in the pro football. Third down eight, big third down play for the Oklahoma defense. Shotgun. Mills completes to Corlin Grimes, but not for much. Just a few yards. And so it's fourth down. The ball will be placed on the 26-yard line, bringing up a fourth down and five, and UNT will have to kick the ball away again. Merle, we know we talked about Cedric Jones several times today. In his senior year in high school in Houston, Texas, he had 30 sacks in his senior year in high school. Oh, man. He must have... He must have wanted to play on the offense on the other team on the other team's offense. That's that pretty is. good. PJ Mills, Toby Golan are the featured performers right now in this punting situation. Golan kicking into the wind. Drills this one downfield, gets good hang time on a fair catch called for and taken by PJ Mills at the 32 yard line. So that's where the Sooners will put it in play as they trail two to nothing. <laughs> Kick of 43 yards and no return. The UNT Bookstore is your headquarters for new Eagle logo apparel and merchandise. Today's featured item is this gray UNT logo t-shirt by Gear for Sports. It's 100% cotton and available in medium, large, extra large sizes for just $17.99. You can place your order by phone or by calling the UNT Bookstore at 1-800-UNT-2366. Garrick McGee is the new quarterback for Oklahoma. First and 10 on the 32. They go to the run. It's recovered, however, by Gerald Moore. And he was covered immediately by Sterling Guest, the middle linebacker, number five. McGee is a quarterback that, that went to junior college. He's a, he's a Tulsa native. And he came in here last year and he set all kinds of records. He did a great job a as a quarterback. He, th he threw and completed the a bunch of passes, had a lot of yardage, and can make things happen. It's second and 10 from the same spot of a moment ago. At the 32 yard line of Oklahoma, UNT leading on the safety, two to nothing. McGee pitches. Carried by Allen. Allen a first down, about 11. Brought down by Calvin Davis, 37, and Willis Hudson, 56. Gain of 10 plus. 
I think that's Oklahoma's second first down of the game, except for the one by penalty on the uh, on the block kick. But the long pass and, and this this pitch sweep here uh, is only their second uh, first down. Now, what you got to watch off that pitch sweep is a throwback to the quarterback. It is second, uh, first down and 10, 7.34 to go. Here comes the pitch again, and here comes Allen again. This time, or rather, uh, more. And this time, the defense stopped him after a five-yard pickup by Anthony Colvin, number 60, and Calvin Davis, 37. Gerald Moore, the junior from Houston, this guy has averaged 8.5 yards a carry in the first two games. Gained 2,400 yards his senior year in high school. Mm. That's not too bad. Some people don't gain that in 10 years. But, you know, you, you, again, you have to give credit to this UNT defense going up against this kind of personnel, the veteran personnel, and experienced personnel of the Sooners. Second down. Tailback. Merle what you're gonna first see, down. What you're going to see now, Merle, is, is I think that they're going to probably abandon uh, their passing game and, and just try to get some points on the board by running the ball. And, and wearing down uh, the Eagle defense because what happened in the first half, or in the first quarter, we controlled the ball a little bit, but it's been three and out, three and out the last three series. P.J. Mills leaves the game now as new wideouts come on for Howard Schnellenberger. Close it up, he says, close it up. Once the end's in tight, third down and short, double tight end. Going to be close, but there's a flag on the play as Gerald Moore tried to run behind Carollo. And Sterling Guest, number five, the junior linebacker, and Moji Gibson, 49, the junior weak side cornerback, come in to make the stop. He may have called illegal procedure on the right tackle. From uh, This is, again, one of these things where both people seem to move, and it's just a, a, a judgment call. I guess he called it on the defense. This is where they call that encroachment, that new uh, rule they put in this year. Offside against uh, UNT, and that'll be a first down for the Sooners. Six minutes, six seconds left to go in the first half. Offside Matt, Matt Simon has defense. prepared his team Five very well uh, for the first Sooners down. today. He said even before the season started, he loves to go up against this kind of competition because it's going to teach his kids how far they have to go to really build a strong winning program, but going up against this kind of competition, they just get better every week. First down. Pass completed. McDaniel, first down on the 25. Calvin Davis made the tackle. A little roll to the right, and Michael McDaniel hit the tight end on the crossing pattern is what they did here. This is where your athletes come into play because it's very, very tough for a linebacker to cover a tight end if he's got any speed on that particular type of play. 18 yards picked up on the play by Michael McDaniel. who has scored one touchdown for the Sooners this year. First down of the 25 of UNT. Garrick McGee is moving the Sooners offensively. Pitches to Moore. Moore trying to get around the corner. Sterling Guest made a great play. He was over there to make the play. He got him out of bounds inside the 25. Marcellus Hill, the linebacker, uh, partner of Sterling Guest, also assisting. Boy, that's Sterling Guest, though. You know, before the, uh, the season started, Coach Matt Simon said, he should help us this year. Well, Although he wasn't a starter at that time. As you know, we watched him at Texas Stadium one day in a pre-practice workout, and uh, he looked pretty good there. Second down, seven for the Sooners. We have 5.15 to go in the first half. UNT had two to nothing. Again, the run. This time, it is James Allen carrying to the 20, where Philip Armour, who was shaken up earlier a couple of minutes ago, back in the ball game, makes the hit. Marcellus Hill in there to help out also. I hope all our viewers are watching this game and enjoying it as much as we are bringing it to you. And I hope they're all there for the Alabama-Birmingham homecoming game in, in, in about three weeks. That date, by the way, for that game is October 14th. Next week, next Saturday, it's an off day for uh, UNT. Third down, almost five. Shotgun. 
McGee gonna run. First down and more. Touchdown, McGee. Quarterback draw. That's a tough play because the both backs released out of the backfield and the linebackers go with them. And uh, what happens is the defensive uh, linemen are blocked. What what happens in this particular play? The line, the both backs release outside. Somebody makes a very very good block on 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 48, the defensive tackle, and it's an easy touchdown. Garrick McGee has got a lot of athletic ability. So the Sooners take the lead. And now Oklahoma takes a timeout. Four minutes, 24 seconds left to go in the first half as Oklahoma has taken the lead. Now, Gil, let's do a little bit of your analysis on is it a two-point try or a one-point try? Well, according to our chart, this is a two-point try. If you're ahead by four, which is six to two, uh, which they are, you go for two here. So let's see. Uh, it looks like they're going to kick it, though. But uh, let's see if uh, Coach Nellenberger pays any attention to it. As I, as I look at it further, I do see their backs in the game, so I think they're going to go for two. 19-yard touchdown run. Three minutes and 55 seconds on that eight-play drive. So the Sooners will go for two. They put that ball on the three-yard line when you announce that you're going to go for the conversion. So, with McGee's quarterback draw, the 193-pounder out of Tulsa, rambled in 19 yards for the leading score for Oklahoma. They're going for two right now. They'll probably try to run some kind of a roll right and a switch pattern over on that side. No, I guess not. McGee looking for it. And open is P.J. Mills. For the two-point conversion. What they did is, is they put the both flankers to the wide side of the field. They rolled right and had the flanker come back inside. And, and it's, a, it's a very tough pattern to cover. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Oklahoma has finally taken the lead over the very stubborn 15, Eagles from the University of North Texas. Jeremy Alexander will be kicking off for the first time today. 25 minutes and 36 seconds to hell him without a score. Uh, I think that's pretty good defense. Two men deep. Alexander booms that ball into the end zone where it will be down by Tubby Coleman. So it's first and 10 for the Eagles at the Eagle 20. Well, Eagles uh, had to watch the Sooners go 68 yards on eight plays in three minutes and 55 seconds. And McGee really put some spark into this offense, Gil. Oh, he really does. And, and as we talked to Howard yesterday, he felt McGee was a senior and he felt that the uh, number one uh, had just a better chance of, of playing uh, in the long haul here at Oklahoma. Jason Mills is the quarterback. White out to each side in the slot right. Bo Harrison stopped on the 20. No game. Rod Manuel, number 85, defensive end, makes the tackle. And, and there was a case where uh, Ivy, Corey Ivy, recognized the play a lot better that time and, and really made him turn it up a lot faster than he wanted to. Second down, 10. Troy Redwines puts that wide to the left side. 
Three wide outs left. No pursuit brought down by Rod McDaniel. Or rather, Rod Manuel. So a long loss on that play of eight yards. You know, probably what happened there is, is uh, uh, with Sterling Lucky getting hurt, uh, all of a sudden uh, Mark uh, Manuel has become a force in there. And uh, I think he's had two sacks. He just kind of slipped off the blocker here, Henneman. And uh, Henneman looks uh, like he's uh, trying to block inside, and uh, Manuel goes outside. Third down play, big one for the defense. Very important now for the Eagles. That pitch to Harrison, incomplete a foul. It is incomplete a foul. Exactly. <laughs> that pitch forward is nothing more than a forward pass. That, uh, that's what they call the old Utah shuffle pass. And uh, what it does is it's a very, very good play uh, in that type of a situation because they've got five defensive backs on the field and they just try to get you going forward and, and, and slip it behind you. But Harrison just dropped the ball on that particular play. So it's fourth down. 18 yards to go for the Eagles. The Eagles are up on the line of scrimmage ready to go and the defense is trying to get on the field. <laughs> They snap that ball to the through the end zone, but it's going to be a penalty. It's going to be a safety, I believe. Well, wait a minute, though. No, I don't think that can be a play because Oklahoma was not on the field. They had uh, no punter back there even. Well, Merle, or is it? What happened is uh, it looks like the punter didn't come on the field, and and they just had ten men on the field is what it amounts to. No, the penner was not there, so it's, it's just three they, points. They take the safety, and uh, it doesn't make any difference how many players the defense has on the field, except if they have more than 11. Then well, that's uh, what I was trying to count because there was so much confusion going they, on. They, I counted them as they came out, and they they finally had 10 on the field. But uh, Toby, uh, I think, just uh, didn't realize it was fourth down and didn't get on the field. You know, what they do in a situation like that is they have somebody designated to count how many players there's on the field on the offense. And it's usually the up back, and I guess he just didn't turn around to look and see what took place there. But, you know, you see, if they kick out of the end zone, then Oklahoma's going to get great field position. So with the way that Goen has been punting, maybe this is where they're going. We'll find out. <laughs> That's why we have Ed Budenero down there. That's right. P.J. Mills is back. It'll be a free kick for UNT. So it's 10 to 2, Oklahoma. You know, Merle, in the two games, the last two games we've done, there's been four safeties. You know, usually you go through a whole season and you don't see a safety. Maybe you see one, and here we see four in two games. This is a rolling kick that's going to be fielded on the 35 by Oklahoma and covered uh, by the Eagles downfield with the special teams at the 45-yard line, so the Sooners still have pretty good position. Terry Watson, number 29, downfield on the coverage. Kick of 45 yards and a 10-yard return. We are what is equivalent, I am told, to 10 stories high in our booth here in Norman. This is the highest press box in college football is what it is so sometimes our viewers have to understand why we don't see the numbers quite as fast as you'd like to see them mcgee is the quarterback first down on the 45 the pitch now here's the throwback coming to it's a lateral uh, <laughs> it finally comes back to mcgee and mcgee is chased out of bounds guess where at the line of scrimmage well, by Calvin Davis. That's the play I was telling you about that I thought they were going to throw. Well, that was Terrence Brown, the former quarterback that's you were talking about. exactly Number right. Three. What, what it is, it's a, it's a uh, run here to the, to the right, and he just throws it back. Uh, and, and this is a play they tried to run against the SFU last week. Uh, I've kept all these plays on my card, and, and I look like a genius here calling them, but uh, it's just something that took place. Second and ten on the 45 of Oklahoma, 2.48 to go in the first half. This time it is Allen trying to break to the outside, lost the football, and UNT has it. Calvin Davis, 37, and Lorenzo Washington on the hit, and UNT has the football. 
Maybe that safety wasn't such a bad play after all. They come out of that thing with real good field position. I think Matt had it planned all along. Well, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if that was a planned play. <laughs> no, I don't believe it was a planned play, but... Uh... Now what we need to do is 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 convert after a after a turnover. That's what you need to do. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see him try to go deep right here on the first play. Although it's very hard to go deep because of the fact that you're throwing into about a 15 mile an hour wind. But a lot of people after a turnover like to go for the whole ball of wax. Clock stopped with the change of possession. First down for UNT on its own 47 yard line. Pitch to Harrison. To midfield into the 49 of Oklahoma. Merle, they had a great setup over here on the right side. Actually, there was only one uh, one defensive back over here and two wide receivers out here. But uh, they gained five yards, so that's all that counts. Let's go down to Ed Budenero to find out what's going on in the field. Ed? Thank you very much, Merle. It's very simple. The punter, Toby Goins, just didn't know it was fourth down, and he didn't get on the field, and nobody else on the line realized that the punter wasn't back there, so they just snapped it. Back up to you, Merle. All right, Ed. Gil, you were right on. <laughs> <laughs> so we found out what the mystery was, and there was no mystery at all. There just wasn't any kicker back there. Well, and Troy Redwine, the intended receiver. Merle, I've never seen that happen. I, I haven't I, either. I have never seen that happen. Uh, but I, I figured that's what, what took place. But as I said, they've got a designated counter, and he should have caught that. But why was Oklahoma's coming on the field while all this play was going on. I That's think, they, I think they thought it was third down also. Well, I'll tell you what, it's it was interesting. Third down six now for North Texas. Two minutes to go in the first half. Oklahoma leading 10 to 2. We have movement up on the line. And we may have had a legal procedure against uh, the left tackle of uh, Waddle. UTN. This is again one of these plays where did Jones jump? Ball. Ball start on the offense. Five yard Hankleton penalty. might have been playing that uh, position at the time, 78. I believe he was. Now it's third down and 10. We talked about being so high in the sky here today. That means we have to have excellent spotters, and we have them. Hank Nickinson, who is with us throughout the year with UNT, and Bob Stevens, the former basketball coach, head coach at the University of Oklahoma, is spotting the seniors for us. Here is Redwine, and Redwine. 35-30, make the distance, 10, 5, he is in, touchdown! Flag at the end of the play. Did, did, he, did he throw the ball down? I don't know, if he, 50 did, yards. if he did, then it's the celebration rule comes in effect. But the touchdown will stand, and if it is, that they penalize him on the kickoff. On the kickoff. And and if it happens twice to the same player, he's automatically ejected from the game. Merle, you know, you talked about uh, Bob Stevens. Bob is a is, is an old friend of mine. We used to go to the NCAA hey, basketball tournaments After together, and was a very good basketball coach, incidentally. Excellent basketball coach. I did a lot of the games at broadcast a lot of the games that Bob coached for OU. So the Eagles are right back in business. Now do they go for two for a tie or do they kick it for one? I think they're asking them right now what they want to do here. But it, what they're doing is they're changing personnel right now. I think they're going to go for it for the two. Our chart says they should go for two. I don't know if they pay any attention to our chart or not, but when you're behind by two, when you're behind by two, you go for two. Kelly Ramsey, the holder, is on the field, but let's see if he's coming off now. What they've done is is they put uh, they put uh, Jennings in the game, so that usually means that they're going to go for two, I believe. When they put Clay Jennings, number 48, in the game. Clay Jennings is the Eagles' uh, designated blocker. And also a defensive tackle, so he's a tough guy. So the Eagles are going to go for the tie. Or are they? I guess they are. Jason Mills. The shotgun. It's going to be a blitz here is what it's going to be. 
position. Got the two. They caught him in a blitz. The, uh, the backer on that side uh, blitzed, and they, uh, they pitched it, and it was good for two. It's a tie game. A lot Ivy, who probably was supposed to go with the pitch man, just got caught inside her. It's a, a typical freshman mistake. Okay, we're all tied up at 10 now with a minute 50 seconds left to play. I had said that they were in a shotgun, but I'll tell you, there was so much going on, and we're so far away from the field, I couldn't even find a quarterback. But uh, the pitch works perfectly, and we have a brand new ball game again with a minute 50 seconds. in the first half. What happened is, is I think they, what, what they tried to do is blitz on that, on a two point play and, and in the linebacker, the UNT. middle linebacker Ivy didn't get there in time to make the play. Gerald Moore is back deep. for the Sooners at the 20-yard line. In motion is Alexander. Sets now as the tight end right. Defense makes the adjustment. And up the middle comes number seven, Gerald Moore, who almost broke it. Willis Hudson, 56, yanks him down on the 30-yard line after a pickup of 10. Well, Merle, it would be very interesting right now to see if you're going to try to run it out or they're going to try to go for a score. You know, you've got to go 70 yards uh, for a score, but you may want to just try to get it in position for a field goal. The Eagles came roaring back to tie this game on the 55-yard touchdown pass. Out Incomplete out of bounds. So McGee had the target, Terrence Brown, but Brown caught the ball out of bounds. You know, uh, Garrett McGee has got a very, very strong arm. You can see it the way he throws that sideline route. But one thing about Garrick, the ball seems to kind of take off on him, and it really took off that time. And Brown was wide open, but it was high, and he had a jump, and he came down out of bounds. You only need one foot in bounds in college football, but uh, he didn't have any feet in bounds. Second down, 10 on the 30. Score tied at 10, a minute 20 left in the first half. The Sooners and the Eagles in Norman, Oklahoma. McGee almost intercepted, but then a great catch. A terrific catch by Steven Alexander off the hands of Calvin Davis, who just about intercepted that ball. It, it's an 18-yard pickup. If Davis is able to intercept that ball, he what, possibly what would be in the end zone. Is, is Calvin Davis steps in front of the ball, and it goes up in the air, and, and great concentration by Alexander. He's falling backwards, and yet he catches the ball for an 18-yard gain. Big play. Minute 17 to go, just shy of the midfield stripe. Oklahoma back to the run. And the tackle not made, and it should have been made, and Allen gets out of the trap there and gets all the way to the 32-yard line before Calvin Davis can bring him down. It's another first down for Oklahoma, and they spot the ball of the 31 with a minute nine seconds to go in the first half. The clock will stop while they set the chains. 16-yard pickup on the play. Now they move the ball back a yard to the 32, the original spot that we called. 
Merrill, this is where you have to make a trap or, or, or something to get them out of field goal range and get them out of this rhythm that they're in right now. Clock running inside a minute to go in the first half. McGee on the pitch, tailback. The cut for about three, four yards. Marcellus Hill, 45, made the tackle on Gerald Moore. And Oklahoma takes a timeout with 45 seconds to go in the first half. Score tied at 10. The Eagles scored first on a safety. That was in the first quarter. Then Garrick McGee carried on a quarterback draw for 19 yards and a touchdown to put the Sooners ahead with 420 go, uh, 424 to go in the first half. Then the Sooners converted with uh, the two-point play. And North Texas came right back on a Jason Mills pass to Troy Redwine for 54 yards and a touchdown. And then... The Eagles converted for two to tie it. Now let's look at scores of other ball games on the Dr. Pepper scoreboard. Notre Dame really rolling now. Boy, Bob Davies is doing some job, isn't he? Coaching he, he in the, really is. He's an excellent young football coach. Replacing uh, the ailing Lou Holtz, Nebraska, in the second quarter against Pacific with a shutout going. And Virginia beats Clemson. In, Clem in Clemson. And Miami takes a whack from Virginia Tech. You know, Virginia Tech lost to somebody last week. They were shut out by somebody. And, and, and what happened is the Miami quarterback was hurt. Second down on the 27. McGee takes, throws, end zone, has the receiver out there. Flag goes down in the end zone. You know, that's a case, that's an uncatchable ball right there. The ball actually flew out of the end zone. I don't see how you can call that as an interference penalty because the ball was out of the end zone. ball was throwing high. What they're doing here, Merle, is they're, they're running a, a, a post pattern is what they're doing. And if you see the ball is way overthrown here, the ball actually lands in the, in the end of the end zone. And, and that play is supposed to be, if it's an uncatchable ball, then it is not supposed to be a penalty. It's a 15-yard penalty. It, it's, it's a little different in, in college football. The most they get is 15, but I don't really think that's a, a that's penalty period. On the defense, 15 yards, previous spot, first down. The ball is taken to the UNT 13-yard line. Well, Gibson, it's unfortunate. Gibson is, uh, is out there, and he's first been a backup player and a junior, and, and he's playing in place of Wilson, who's uh, who's been injured. So... Uh, you know, you're trying to play the best you can with, with people that uh, uh, that are backup people, and I, I just don't think it's fair to penalize a, a, a team on a play that's an uncatchable ball. So McGee is calling his play, and here come the Sooners. Wide to the right side is P.J. Mills. Split to the left side is Terrence Brown. Merrill, they're in a shotgun here, and I wouldn't be surprised, and I guess they're not going to go into the shotgun, but if they're in that shotgun, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see them hit the hit one of the running backs on what they call a double circle route coming out of the backfield. We need to watch that. Now they are going to go to the shotgun. Here's McGee being chased, throwing, being caught by Gerald Moore, the running back who came out of the backfield. He's out of bounds to stop the clock. Inside the 10-yard line with 30 seconds to go. And the backer did a very good job of engaging him as he came out right on the line of scrimmage there. He engaged him and kind of knocked him off his route rather than let him get a swing and up for a touchdown is what it was. Time out for Oklahoma. So McGee to the sideline. He's going to get on the headset with the offensive coordinator upstairs. Our next television game will be from Reno, Nevada on Saturday, October 7th, 3 o'clock, that'll be two weeks from today, 3 o'clock Central Time on Channel 27, KDFI, and the Metroplex, University of North Texas against the University of Nevada, Reno. Well, we're going to have some fun out there at, uh, in Reno. I'll tell you that uh, one of my former quarterbacks, Glenn Carano, his father owns three hotels out there, so I think we'll at least be able to get a bottle of Carano Ferrari wine or a free meal out there when we're there. Okay, let's see. One. Oklahoma is out of timeouts. What, what you're probably going to see here is, is, is one or two things. They'll try to get the ball in the end zone, or the second thing you might see, I, 
is is where they go and and run that quarterback draw. I think they really have one timeout left. I don't think they've taken but uh, about two timeouts. Well, the scoreboard is saying one, but our charts show none remaining. Second down with McGee. Time to throw. Throws. Touchdown by Alexander. That's the tight end again. Steven Alexander, a 6'4", 224-pound tight end with a pair of soft hands. He can catch that ball. Well, he's a, he was a great basketball player in high school, and as I said previously, he was a state high jump uh, uh, champion in track. And when you weigh 240 pounds and you jump 6'8", that's pretty good athletic ability. I think he averaged 17 points a game in basketball in high school. Now the conversion try, and it'll be Jeremy Alexander. Not related to Stephen Alexander, though. Kicks it through. You know, Stephen Alexander made, made a big play in that drive where he caught that tip pass uh, and kept the drive alive. So uh, it was uh, a little bit of luck in that play, but also a very good play calling by Howard and his staff. What, what happens here is the quarterback kind of rolls right and, and, the, and the tight end just releases outside. Garrick McGee looked him off real well. Here comes the tight end across, and, and he just can't cover. Uh, they just can't quite get there to make the play. Washington, who's, uh, who's a strong safety. And, and as we said earlier, Washington has a tendency to play the run, although I don't think there was any run action on, on that particular pass play. So we have 24 seconds remaining in the first half, and Oklahoma has recaptured the lead. Well, the way this game is going, maybe UNT can... Take that kickoff right back to the goal line and punch it in the end zone and tie it up again. Well, I don't believe there's any fan that's watching this game today at home that can say they, they haven't gotten their money's worth in this first uh, 29 minutes and, uh, and 36 seconds because it's been a very, very good game. Here's what's probably going to happen. They're probably not going to uh, let them get a return. They'll probably try to kick a line drive here to negate the return. We've had some strange things happen in this game so far, haven't we? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> he kicked it off. This is going to go back into the end zone and down to the end zone. So no time uh, elapses off the clock as Tubby Coleman takes the knee in the end zone. It's first down on the North Texas 20. I think we'll see the quarterback take his knee right here, too. It looks like Gully's going to go in here. First down for the Eagles. Alabama-Birmingham will come to Denton. And that game will be coming up on October 14th at Fouts Field. You can call 1-800-UNT-2366 for ticket information. I'll tell you, this is a great game. Watson Brown, who's the head coach at Alabama-Birmingham, is, is a, a very, very good coach. And uh, I think it'll be an exciting game there. Gully at quarterback takes the knee and so that will be the end of the first half as the players are leaving the field and the Sooners in the last seconds of this first half have recaptured the lead after trailing at the end of the first quarter two to nothing. It is now 17-10, and let's go to the field to Ed Budenero. Thank you very much, Merrill. Coach, you're in a great position coming into halftime. Any adjustments you'll be making? Well, one, we better get everybody out that's supposed to be out on a punt team. I, I'm embarrassed about that. The dad getting kids stand on sidelines so noisy, you, you know, you can't hear us yell, and we're trying to get a timeout. Kids didn't hear it. Uh, it was a stupid mistake. That's the only thing I'm really upset about. Thank you, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Back up to you, Merrill. All right, Ed. Well, well, we know one thing for sure. That was not a planned play. <laughs> no, I tell you what, that's going to be an embarrassment uh, to that young kicker who's done such a good job. But you know what may have happened, and, and, and you notice that the, the Oklahoma people were late getting on. The, 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 the sideline marker may have said third down is what may have happened. Could have been. And we're at halftime. And the Oklahoma Sooners lead the UNT Eagles by a score of 17 to 10. And we'll be back in a moment. Federal Emergency Management Administration, known as FEMA. And the second half kickoff by the Oklahoma Sooners is down to the end zone, and UNT will bring it out to the 20 yard line as Tubby Colvin takes a knee. And the Eagles, who trailed by seven, 
will put the ball in play from the 20. You've seen the head coaches. Uh, I imagine there were very interesting discussions going on in each dressing room at halftime. Uh, no, no question about it. I tell you what, there was uh, some soul searching uh, on the part of both people. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, it's, it's been a well played game, I think, and it's an interesting game for the fans. So it's first down for the Eagles. Up over the ball is Jeff Bowles, the center, as the offense is ready to go. Merle, That's Bo Harrison to the 23. Out, they came out in a no huddle that time, and, and we'll see. It looks like they're going to run from a no huddle uh, offense again uh, right here. They're putting two tight ends in the game. Second down, seven. Jason Mills, quarterback, the team throughout the first half, except for the last play of the first half. He rolls to the left, looking, running out of bounds. Covered by Broderick Simpson. Let's go down for a sideline report from Ed Budinero. Ed? Thank you, Merle. Just before half of the last offensive series of downs, the quarterback, Jason Mills, had it injured his sternum. It bruised pretty badly. And during the half, they did an evaluation, and the decision was made to go ahead and allow Jason to go ahead and stay in the game. So, Merle, be looking out for Jason to have a big half in spite of an injury. All right, Ed. Here is Jason Mills. Brian Smith has come in as a wide out. He switched to the right side. Troy Redwine is going to even go outside him. Three wide outs. Third down. Doesn't go with Bo Harris on the running back. An inside handoff for about a yard or so. Baron Downer made a great play there. He just uh, he just tripped him up by his ankles is what happened. There he is, number 92, Baron Tanner. You know, I know uh, Mrs. Mills is back there in Denton watching this game, and I think she can be very proud of the performance that uh, her son put on in the first half. He played very well. Uh, let's see. He's getting a little attention on the sideline right now. Toby Gowen will do the punting. He's kicking into the wind. It's come out of the south today. This one hangs up high for P.J. Mills, and he called for the fair catch. Down the ball to the 33. You know, he looked around there, Gil, like, why did I do that? I had a little running room. Well, a 42-yard uh, punt and no return. Yeah, they, they held him up pretty good. It was a high kick. There was a good hang time on the kick. And it's one of those kicks that uh, after you fair catch it, you say, oh, my gosh, why did I do that instead of trying to run it? First down to the 33. The Sooners on the offense now with P.J. Mills splitting wide to the left side. And the quarterback is Eric Moore who started the game for the Sooners. Here comes that handoff uh, on a fake pitch wide and then goes to the one retain, uh, back remaining, and that's Gerald Moore up the middle, brought down by Calvin Davis, number 37, but he picked up significant yards on the play, nine of them, in fact, and Mer it'll be second down and one. Merle, both the backs, Moore and Allen, are very good cutback runners, and, and you'll see them. They'll, they'll take it wide and, and try to cut it back inside. Uh, a lot like Emmett Smith runs. Second down one for the Sooners. Wide outs to each side. Eric Moore, the freshman from Carter High School in Dallas, running the Sooners. This time it is Moore who breaks into the middle, breaking tackles, and finally pulled down by Galvin Davis. But this time he gets big time yardage. Inside the 35 to the UNT 34. Well, what happens here is is more more just real strong running good block by allen and he just breaks tackles and breaks tackles and then instead of trying to tackle him they try to tackle the ball uh, which everybody's doing and, and when you try to tackle the ball and are not successful all of a sudden there's about 15 yards tapped onto the run and in this case an extra nine 24 yards picked up on the play tailback no hold cut and then comes back up the middle inside the 30 to the 29. That's James Allen. Lorenzo Washington, 39, the senior from Marshall, Texas. On the stop along with Sterling Guest, and Guest is down. Sterling Guest is on the ground. This is, if, if he's hurt and unable to play, uh, this is a very, very serious injury uh, to their team. Uh, not to Guest, uh, I'm not sure. I think he's okay, but 
if he has to uh, go out and not be able to come back, this will really hurt their defense because they're strong. They're already short at linebacker uh, is what, what amounts to. Sterling Guest is a junior college player that came here from California this last year and has played very well. He's a great athlete. He was an outstanding swimmer in high school, and he's really done a lot of things both in the game to stop to run and also has been very good on the special teams in the kicking game. Gain of five yards on the play, uh, and it'll be second down five. Jennings, Clay Jennings also was shaken up uh, by uh, on that last play. And Matt Simon, he has to live through this thing with uh, a thin roster, so to speak. Three regulars on the defense are not playing this uh, week either. They missed the game last week against Oregon State, and Guest being assisted off the field. Well, you know, fortunately, Justin Ray is a very, very good replacement. Actually, he's been a starter and he plays very well, number 51. But what it does, it cuts down things you can do. Second down five for Oklahoma. About two for Gerald Moore as Marcellus Hill, 45. Well, we've called his name a lot today, uh, Gil. He has played very well, and he's another one of those young players that are going to be here for three years. And uh, it, it really uh, is a bright future for the North Texas Eagles is what it amounts to. Third down three after the short game. This is a big play right here because you've got to stop him because you have the wind at your back in the fourth quarter, and if you can keep it close, you got a chance. Oklahoma leading by seven here in the third quarter over the UNP Eagles. This time Moore is going to run the ball himself, get to the outside, and he's not going to bounce. At about the 16-yard line by Calvin Davis, but he has a first down. Well, it's very hard to defense that play because Moore is very fast, and he breaks containment and gets outside and, and uh, makes, a ball, uh, makes a first down, which is really all that counts. They move the ball ahead one yard to the 15. Again, 13 yards on that one. 11.37 to go in the third quarter. The Sooners 17 and the Eagles 10. The Eagles have an off day next Saturday. And then they go to Reno to play Nevada Reno. This time it's crazy. Or Allen rather. And Allen is brought down on the 15 by Brett Renfro, 43, and Marcellus Hill, 45, the linebackers. Renfro reminds me of a, of a player named Dave Edwards that we had with the Cowboys for about 13 years. All he does is, is, is play steady. He's not sensational, but he makes a lot of plays, and that's what uh, Brent Renfro is, a very, very good football player, very solid player. Shane McLaughlin is back in the ball game after getting a little blow. Brent Renfro in three games, 25 tackles to lead the team. Second down. Running play up the middle of the 13. Lorenzo Washington stops James Allen, number 25. You know, Merle, a little trick they're trying to do now is everybody's trying to lay that ball out in front of them. If you saw Allen on this last play, he tries to lay the ball out in front of him, and, and it, occasionally it will be a fumble, in, and it's a, it's a very, very controversial call when it happens. I think that happened in the North Carolina-Louisville game the other night. Yes, it did. It sure the ball. Did. Third down. Shotgun. Allen under a blitz and throws to the end zone incomplete. Steven Alexander, who had caught a touchdown pass right before the first half ended, hits the deck, shaken up a little bit. Calvin Davis, number 37, had the coverage. He, he kind of ran an out and up pattern is what he ran there, and, and I think they uh, didn't expect him to, to run the up part of the pattern, and he had, uh, he had Davis turned around is what it amounted to. Jeremy Alexander, the field goal kicker, will go right up the middle of the field from the 20, which would make it a 30-yard field goal if he makes it. From the 20, add 10 for the end zone. And it's good. So a 30-yard field goal puts three more on the scoreboard for the Sooners, who now lead by a score of 20-10 with 10-16 to go in the third quarter. Just the Sooners have their largest lead of the afternoon, ahead by 10 with 10-16 to go in the third quarter. And the scoring drive, eight plays, 47 yards with a 30-yard field goal by Alexander. 
you know, Merle, one of the things we talked about in the pregame show was, was return yardage. You know, last week against Oregon State, there were three kick returns for about 155 yards, and today there has not been a kickoff return. They've all been in the end zone. Jeremy Alexander kicks off deep into the end zone, which will not be brought back by Tubby Coleman. And it'll be first down for UNT at the UNT 20. We understand that Stephen Guest will probably not return this afternoon. He suffered an ankle injury. Two weeks from today, we will be in Reno, Nevada to bring you the game between UNT and Nevada Reno at 3 o'clock Central Time. That will be on October 7th on Channel 27 in the Metroplex, KDFI. We hope you will join us. Merle, Nevada Reno is a very good football team. They have an outstanding quarterback by the name of Maxwell, who's going to be a high draft choice in the National Football League. Slot right, wide outs to each side. Mills on the pitch. Harrison trying to get to the outside, can't do it. That Oklahoma speed starts to come through, and the Roverback, Rod Henderson, number 17, chased him across the field along with the Quasi. So you had what uh, happens here is it's a very good force here by the, the rover number 27 Henderson and the linebacker does a great job here. DeQuazy does a very, very good job. So it's it's it you just can't legislate against speed. Loss of almost a yard. Second down eleven. Screen to the flanker, Smith. Smith across the twenty to the twenty-two. Not much there either. Maybe three. So it now is a third down and eight coming up. Darius Johnson, 42. Broderick Simpson, 51. Malin Wesley, number five, the free safety, all over there. And this Oklahoma defense can move it. Wesley's a very good player. You know, he beat out uh, the, the starting uh, free safety from last year. Bo Harrison goes all the way to the left. No running back for Jason Mills. Intercepted on the 36-yard line by Bush. Larry Bush up in the air to pull it down and is brought down immediately at the 35. Well, the corner played it well. Bush uh, just uh, had nobody to cover, and he just dropped in there, dropped into the inside. You'll see it here in just a second. He's trying to hit the wide receiver out here, and... and Bush just backs off into the play and makes the interception here. Mm. Jason trying to split those two, two defenders, and Bush picked it off. Eric Moore, now the quarterback with a first down for Oklahoma. Here's a reverse with Brown. Brown trying to get that, and now makes a nice cut inside. He got a good block out there at about the 35-yard line, and it enabled him to get five yards out of it. That's interesting. Blocker was out there to make a block. Well, it's played very well. It, 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 it's, it's a play that sometimes will fool you, but it uh, it is played very well here by the Eagles, and and there's a, a, a block that's a little bit suspect, but uh, they do a good job of containing it. It's a five-yard gain, but it's uh, still played well. Second down, five. And the handoff goes for a loss of five as Gerald Moore was greeted by Marcellus Hill, 45, and Willis Hudson, 56. That's been a pretty good combination defensively today for the Eagles. Well, they tried to run a fake pitch, and they give it to the fullback coming inside, and it's a, it's a play that... Uh, uh, they try to loosen you up a little bit with get the middle linebacker running out of there and he just didn't run out of there and he made the tackle for a five yard loss. Third down nine. This is where you want to watch the tight end here. Eric Moore in the shotgun. Incomplete. This time it was Moore who tried to split two defenders to Michael McDaniel the tight end. And there were two defensive backs out there covering on the play. Merle, would you go for it on this uh, in this position here on a fourth and nine, or because it's probably too long to kick a field goal? You know, it, it's um, this is a situation where Schnellenberger is still trying to find out what his guys can do. Yeah, well, he's going to punt here, but uh, you know, it's uh, I'm not sure that I wouldn't go for it there. The, 
That reminds you of Bear Bryant, maybe? <laughs> Brian Lewis punting. Brian Smith back. Ball is out of bounds on the far side line. It'll be marked around the 15, 16, 17 24 yard, yard line. line. About the 24, I believe it on. No, it's your 17. 17. Now, I mentioned Bear Bryant. Of course, he coached uh, Helen, Howard Schnellenberger at Kentucky. We'll be back right after this. Sooners lead the Eagles by a score of 20 to 10. Let's go down to Ed Budenero. Thank you very much, Merle. Two updates on injury. Sterling Guest, the linebacker's ankle. He looks like he won't be able to make it back to play, but Clay Jennings, the uh, fine lineman for the uh, University of North Texas, is just cramped, and we should see him again on the defensive front. Bo Harrison, thank you, Ed. Bo Harrison picking up uh, about three yards to make it second down seven for North Texas. Well, they've got to pull some rabbits out of the hat on offense. This defense is really, really dominated. Uh, it's from the second quarter on, or the middle of the second quarter on, I should say. Second and seven call for Jason Mills. Looks to throw, throws to the far side. It is battle for an incomplete out of bounds. Larry Bush had the coverage on Troy Redwine at the 40-yard line. What happens here, Merle, is they try to hit a streak route, a deep route, and, and the ball kind of hangs up in the air here. Uh, Redwine actually had a step on him uh, initially, and then Bush makes a very good recovery, and he really catches the ball at the at the point, the top point, and uh, it's an incompleted pass, a long incompleted pass. Third down coming up. Eagles really need a first down to help that defense, which has been on the field most of the third quarter. Jason Mills hit behind the line, thrown inside the 10 by... Tanner, number 92, the junior uh, Texan. What else? So a long loss takes the ball back to the 10-yard line where they mark it down. A loss of 10. The offensive line played very well last week against Oregon State. I think they only allowed one sack. But uh, they, they, this, this is a very, very tough team, and they do it without a blitz too. It's a, so it shows you what kind of people they got, what kind of athletes they've got playing for them. Now the Eagles are going to need a long kick from Golan. So Toby's longest this year is in 52, averaging about 43, a little over 43, coming into this game. Hangs this one up high. It's going to come down around midfield. And the Faircats called for and taken by P.J. Mills on his own 49-yard line. A kick of 41 yards and no return. Well, this is where you have to hope that the, the defense can force a turnover here, a fumble or, or, or an interception. But you just got to get some field position. My gosh, I don't think that uh, that they've pa been past the uh, the 25-yard line uh, since uh, the long uh, touchdown pass to Redwine midway through the second quarter. <laughs> And let's take a look at an interesting stat here. Rushing, UNT, minus 27. Oklahoma, 168. But the Sooners lead by only 10. We're in the third quarter. And uh, at halftime, we almost had a tie score at halftime, but the Sooners scored with 24 seconds left to take a 17-10 lead uh, just before the end of the first half. Now it's 20 to 10 with 5.45 to go here in the third quarter in Norman. And Merle, I still say that that, uh, that touchdown pass uh, should have been an uncatchable ball uh, is, is what, what it should have been. We have an injured uh, Eagle. Number 84. I believe that's uh, Hahn. So he is being attended to either Hall or Jones. We have had some number changes here in the last week. No, that's Hahn. So he is being assisted off the field. Let's uh, take a look at the other games around the country brought to us by Dr. Pepper. Notre Dame, 55 to 27 over Texas. A final is Bob Davies is now 2 and 0 as a replacement for Lou Holtz, who went to Mayo for surgery. 
Allen, midfield, Renfro, Popton at the midfield stripe. Texas A&M playing Colorado today. Second quarter, Buffs lead by 10. And Wisconsin smacking SMU around in the fourth quarter up in Madison. Well, it's a very tough place to play up there at Camp Randall. They, uh, they start uh, eating bratwurst and drinking <laughs> early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and don't finish until sometime the next morning. They stick around after the game. Second yes, down coming do. up. Eight. Eric Moore complete. 30 yard line, 20 yard line. That's PJ Mills. And Mills is going to go on in for the touchdown. <laughs> 49 yards. What, what that was, it was a crossing route. It, it, Mills. Uh, uh, came from right to left and just caught the ball and, and he somehow the coverage uh, lost him. We'll see it here on replay. What it is, he's lined up out here to the right. He crosses across, comes across and makes a very good catch here. This young man has got a lot of ability. I watched him four years ago in his first game and he caught a touchdown pass in the first game that he played. He's out of Enid, Oklahoma. So the Sooners have now moved out in front by a score of 26 to 10, and Jeremy Alexander um, kicked it through the uprights, but we have a flag thrown. I think they got an offside on uh, the Eagles on this particular play here. Two plays to take that uh, to take the Sooners in that time. Ball, ball start on the offense. Ball start against Oklahoma. I'm going to quit trying to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of funny because uh, it did look like the Eagle lineman uh, jumped and uh, in that particular time. I guess when there's not a lot involved and they don't mind penalizing uh, Oklahoma five yards, I'll probably get fined for making that statement. Alexander will try again. This is still a chip shot from the 15-yard line for the extra point. And it's still good. You know, we were looking at uh, Coach Snellenberger a moment ago. We'll come back and talk about his demeanor on the sideline a little bit. When we return, Sooners lead by 17. Now the Sooners lead by 17 with 4.59 to go in the third quarter. And the Sooners will be kicking off to Tubby Coleman and Virtus McKinney as we resume play. We talked about Howard Stellenberger, I mean, his demeanor on the sideline. Have you ever seen a more unhappy coach with a 17-point lead? But, you know, he was saying yesterday, I guess, and I think Matt Simon is like this. All coaches are like, if their team, if they don't feel their team is playing well in certain areas, they don't care what the score is. Well, they do care what the score is, but they don't, sure don't like to have the team uh, not playing well in every situation. Let's go down to Ed Budinero for a sideline report, Ed. Thank you very much, Merle. Well, the sternum was being hurting Jason Mills a bit too much. The freshman is going to be coming in, redshirt freshman Josh Gully, to take over at quarterback. Merle, back up to you. All right, Ed, good report. First down. After that kickoff going into the end zone, and Gill, they continue to kick the ball out, especially from south to north. Today. A very, very strong leg. Alexander has a very strong leg, and that's a real weapon. Josh Gully. The freshman quarterback from Grand Prairie South is now in for UNT. Gully looks to throw and completes it to Redwine to about the 28. Totally second down about two. They may move it to the 29. If you notice how fast the linebacker to Quasi's out there, uh, they and, and, and he's probably one of their slower linebackers. But boy, I'll tell you, these people can run. And if you got people that can run on defense, then you're going to be pretty good. But it's amazing that the Quasi can make a play on a pass to the wide receiver. Coylan Grimes, 85, has come in now as a wideout for UNT. Gully goes to the run, Bo Harrison to the 30, maybe 31. Roderick Simpson, 51, the weak linebacker on the stop. Merle, and let me, let's see if they have to measure for a first down. It looks good anyway. Well, let me tell you what respect the Sooners have for the Eagles. Uh, they still have all of their first team players in their playing uh, on the defense. So obviously they have a great deal of respect for the uh, University of North Texas Eagles. First down for the Eagles at the 30-yard line. Wideouts to the left. Yeah. 
Gully at the throw and does throw, and it's incomplete, almost intercepted. Larry Bush, who had already picked off one, really felt he should have picked that one off the grass, but he couldn't contain it. Grimes, 85, was the intended receiver. It looks like the ball was thrown behind him out there. As, uh, he had the man beat, but the ball was thrown behind him. You know, Gully has to set and throw. If, if, if you set and throw, uh, then you're going to throw the ball uh, quite accurately. But when you're a freshman and you're not used to it and you're playing before 65,000 people, you don't think about some things. Second down. Throws. Incomplete. Harrison, the intended receiver, and that one was almost picked up by Broderick Simpson, the linebacker who was covering on that play. You know, uh, Gully does something that's a little bit interesting. I've watched Bernie Kozar. Some quarterbacks come up with their feet even, and he doesn't. He has, let's see, he has the, well, let's watch his footwork when he comes out the next time. He pulls, the, I believe it's the right foot back. I just noticed it there in that, in that last play. I think as, people do that to try to get out quicker yeah. is, is what they do. Well, we're not going to find out now because he goes into the shotgun on third down. Maybe the next series will catch it. Timeout is called by Gully. Gully saw that that, uh, that nickel defense in there with DeQuazy out of the game, and he wanted to take a timeout. So uh, Jason Mills gets some attention on the sideline on that left hand, it appears. You know, Merle, a lot of times when you look at a quarterback hand, especially a throwing hand, this is not his throwing hand. It's because he's hit it on the top of a helmet. Uh, and 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 it's either a, a badly bruised or a broken uh, a, a finger or hand is what it amounts to. Now that's not what happened uh, in Jason Mills' this case, but when you look at uh, people looking at a quarterback's hands, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Oh, so Jay uh, Gully, who is as we mentioned a freshman from Grand Prairie South, one out of three for eight. He is 6'5". He's got great size for a quarterback at 6'5 and 197. May go up to 210 or so in a year, but uh, you really like to see those guys. He really does. And, you know, driving up here yesterday from Dallas, uh, you and I talked about uh, about all these players and what they need to do to improve and so forth. And we thought the one thing that Gully needed to do was to improve his footwork and by playing racquetball and so forth. And uh, if he does that, I think he has a chance to be a pretty good quarterback. Slot left, third down, 10 yards to go. Shotgun. In my right. play. Yep. To Bo Harrison. Doesn't go very far, but... That little inside handoff on the delay or draw, more of a delay, than, and it's at the 29-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Bo Harrison brought down by Sterling Lucky, and Harrison is shaken up on that play. Well, you know, the viewers wonder why you run a play like that in that, in that particular situation. But what happens is they've got all these defensive backs on the field, and your chances of completing a pass are very, very small. You only complete about 35% of the passes when they have the, the nickel or six, uh, the dime defense, whatever you want to call it in there. So people try to run a draw or a, a quarterback draw just to just to get out of the play with, with something other than an interception. And because the defense is looking for the pass sometimes, uh, because of that anticipation, that well, running play will work. Yes, if you break it, it, it's just a little draw play is what it is. and, and uh, It, it looks like he may have caught his, his his leg caught up there and somebody fell on it. I'm, it's really hard to see. Roderick Simpson was uh, there on the play. Tim McLean, the trainer of UNT, and the uh, visor, the white visor, out to lend the medical attention. Bo Harrison, a sophomore from Beaumont Central. We may find out if Tim Fitzpatrick can play football today. He We're has, getting more injuries. He has one year of eligibility left. <laughs> Hank Dickinson has three years. Four years. The punter's on the field this time. Going is back to do the punt and ball. Ball's on the ball and it's taken loose from him and the Sooners may have recovered it on a fumble. They did. Going couldn't get control of it. A high snap from center. 
they recovered on the 10-yard line, and, and, you know, Goins, rather than try to pick it up, the best thing is to take your first loss and just fall on it. The official indicated that Oklahoma had recovered. That's how high the snap it's a was. The high snap is what it is. And then instead of falling on it, he tries to take it and pick it up and run, and somebody just gets it out from underneath. And it didn't really make any difference whether whether he recovered it or, or Oklahoma recovered it because it was going to be the same place anyway. You know, it'd be good to stop him right here just to, to, to make something happen to, for your defense here who has really been on the field a long time today. I think there's been only one first down in the, in the third quarter. Eric Moore at quarterback. That's Gerald Moore. Moore knocked down at about the one-yard line by Avery Wright, number 36, who was there on the tackle. Gerald Moore, a 226-pound fullback. This is Thunder running the ball, and then he just bowls people over. He's got a great acceleration and then cuts back in, which is a mark of a good runner. You know, you don't have to be have a lot of speed, but if you've got acceleration and the ability to cut, you'll be a pretty good runner. So it is first and goal for the Sooners on the UNT one-yard line. Touchdown. Gerald Moore, who took it to the one, takes it on in, number seven, and the Sooners put another six on the board. That was a quick six, I'll tell you that. Two plays and they score, but, you know, it's just tough keeping that defense out there all the time. I think they've played a great game. I think the Eagle fans can be very, very proud of what their team has done today. They don't, uh, they don't have to take a back seat to anything. Now the Sooners lead 33 to 10. Alexander for the extra point try. This is Jeremy Alexander, Stephen Alexander's the tight end. And Jeremy Alexander is good on that one. 34-10 Sooners. The UNT Bookstore is your headquarters for New Eagle logo apparel and merchandise. Today's featured item is a white UNT logo t-shirt from Champion. It's 100% cotton and available in medium, large, and extra large sizes for just $15.99. You can place your order by phone by calling the UNT Bookstore at 1-800- UNT 2366. Merle, that is really a good looking logo on that shirt. I tell you, I've seen some of the uh, students wearing it around campus, and uh, it is an excellent looking shirt. And a big third quarter for Oklahoma. They led at halftime 17 to 10, and they've put 17 points on the board here in the third period. And those kickoffs into the end zone, creating poor field position, uh, is one of the things that lead that led to that. You just got to make some first downs, is what Alexander you have to do. So, Alexander will kick off. Coleman and McKinney are deep for UNT. Alexander with a big leg and is, has the wind to his back here in the third quarter. This one's got plenty behind it, too, and it will be brought to the 20th. Coleman downs the ball. That, that ball takes off like a missile is what it takes off. It really does, First doesn't it? He's got a good leg. First down on the UNT 20. So Josh Gully getting last-minute uh, instructions from head coach Matt Simon. The Green Brigade is here today. The... Fabulous UNT marching band and performed at halftime along with the Sooner band. But the Green Brigade drew loud applause from these Sooner fans who, there they are, who really appreciated the show that they put on. Gully, going to be hit behind the line. He flag goes down on the play now as he... Uh, and they have got a face mask on his play here. Good half. Rod Manuel making the tackle. Now let's see what the flag's about. Gully uh, was getting set to throw. He was looking for Colin, uh, Coylan Grimes, number 85. But he was covered, and so by that time, boom, here comes a red shirt. Manuel has come in and played very well. Uh, uh, Sterling Lucky was hurt on uh, one of the first plays of the game. I think it is a uh, face mask. Five-yard penalty, previous spot. Repeat first down. 
an inadvertent face mask. And I, and I think that's a good call it because is. he really did uh, grab him. And it doesn't make any difference. Uh, uh, it's still a, a face mask violation uh, when you when you have him wrapped up like that and your hand slips off and grabs him. And the reason for it is because a player can be hurt. First down, five. First and five for UNT. Gully throws over the middle, incomplete. The target was Brian Waters, number 40, and Quasi had the coverage. Let's go to Ed Budenero for a sideline report. Thank you very much, Merle. The update of the sideline injuries, in addition to Jason Mills being injured, now Troy Redwine is suffering from a hip pointer, and running back Bo Harrison has hurt his ankle, or actually re-injured his ankle. He'd been playing on a tender ankle, but now he's re-injured it, and he's out for the game. It's beginning to look like a triage area down here, Merle. Gil? Boy, uh, if you see the guys from the cast of General Hospital, tell them to go home. Stop all this stuff. Second down, five. Kelly under pressure throws, incomplete. Kelly took a pretty good pop from Cedric Jones. And Jones has really got great acceleration. You know, he runs a sub uh, 4 7 40. And uh, when, you, when you have that kind of an acceleration coming around that corner, uh, from the blind side, it's uh, that's tough. Mike Boone has come into the game now as a wideout for UNT. Two minutes, six seconds to go in the third quarter. Oklahoma leading 34 to 10. Would you believe the halftime score? 17 to 10 Oklahoma, and OU scored with just seconds to go in the first half. But this third quarter has belonged to the seniors. Gully under pressure. Gully going down again. Guess who? Cedric Jones, 57, the lead tackler and is assisted by Kelly Gregg, number 97, who replaced Arthur Atkins at the right tackle spot. Well, there's no question now that, that he's the all-time sack leader at Oklahoma. And uh, I, I think he's somewhere up around 25 and a half or 26 sacks. Just depends upon whether they give him credit for a full or a half sack on a particular play. But they had a little stunt going where Jones came inside that time and uh, and the tackle went outside and nobody blocked Jones. Cody really. going back to punt and P.J. Mills is back deep for Oklahoma. A minute 20 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Hangs it high. Going to come down around the midfield stripe. Fair catch call for dropped by P.J. Mills. He covers it immediately. So Oklahoma takes over again after that 40-yard punt and no return. Again, this is a final. Virginia Tech 13, Miami 7. It'll be OU's ball at the 47. Look at this rushing yardage. Well, you can see what's going on here today. That uh, minus 51 yards rushing, which is close to a uh, a record uh, today. They stopped Kansas State back in 1986 with 52 yards rushing. All right, Eric Moore is going for it all, has a receiver wide open, and it is Terrence Brown who comes down on the five-yard line. Well, Terrence Brown is a former quarterback who can run about 4-3, and he just ran right by the corner on that particular play. 48 yards on the pass play. What we're going to see here is Terrence Brown. He's, he's got great speed, and he just runs right by the corner is what happens here, and he makes a nice catch, lays out there and catches the ball very well. Then loses his balance and falls down, and he's saying, well, gosh, what happened? I beat the corner, and then I fall down. First and goal to go. Rose and Frazier, now the running back for Oklahoma. The tailback, Frazier. At the five, stopped by Brett Renfro, number 43. You know, Merle, we talked about uh, the reserves being here, backup players. And, and what happens is Gibson, who got beat for that play, is, is really a backup player to, to, to Wilson, to Kellen Wilson. And, and, and this shows you how decimated uh, the Eagles' defense is. Or they've just got people playing uh, that normally wouldn't be playing out there, and they still have played them very tough and very good. One thing, I, I guess the bright side of that maybe is that the experience that these young guys are getting is, is going to bode well for the games up the road and particularly next year. No question about it. 
keep uh, Moore from going down for a loss. The flag on the play as he is Call a clip. out of bounds on about the one-yard line. He called a clip, I believe, on number four the on, the, on the play downfield. That would be P.J. Mills. Right. We have no time left in the third quarter, so that would we'll be the end of the third period. We'll have the win in the fourth quarter. I guess he called holding, but it looked to me like it was a clip is what it looked like. Preliminary signal holding against Oklahoma. So the Sooners will not have the ball in the one. Instead, will be whacked with a 15-yard penalty at the end of the third quarter. So as we head for the fourth period, it's the Oklahoma Sooners 34, the UNT Eagles 10 here at Owen Field in Norman. And as Howard wasn't too happy with that call, I'll tell you that. <laughs> You know, whenever you whenever you lose a touchdown uh, on a play that that uh, you really didn't need to do, uh, because it, it was a it was a touchdown, or at least I think it would have been a touchdown. You know, they may they, there may be a second left on the clock for one play. They're bringing the they're going to bring the ball back to that line of scrimmage, uh, or not the original line of scrimmage, but after the penalty, the ten yard penalty, taking it from the one back out to the eleven. The uh, clock on the scoreboard had run out, but the time is kept on the field, and so apparently there was a second or so left to go in the third quarter. And Oklahoma, going to the north end zone, will come on with another play. Sterling is trying to go back in the game. James Patterson is now as a linebacker. And a shotgun with Eric Moore. Moore throws it incomplete. Intended for Michael Rose, the fullback. Brett Renfro was putting a rush on and had a pretty good pop on the quarterback. Well, now we go to the fourth quarter. The Sooners lead it by a score of 34 to 10. North Texas football is being brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines and by Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers. We're ready for the fourth quarter here in Norman, Oklahoma at Owen Field in Memorial Stadium. Got a double name for the facility. 34-10 Sooners as we start the fourth quarter and the Sooners have the ball on the UNT 11-yard line. The Eagles have been hit with more injuries uh, today. So their ranks are getting thin, so it's a good thing they have the next week off, Gil. Merrill, here's what I think you'll try, they'll try to do here. You'll see one of two things. They'll quarterback draw a possibility or also to top, throw to the tight end in this particular case because they were in the shotgun and they, and they tried to hit the halfback last time. I think this time they'll try to hit the tight end. Eric Moore in the shotgun. But the clock is about to get him. Play clock throws to the end zone, overthrows. Boy, that Moore just barely got that snap in time. Joan Penny, 89, was the target. They were penalized four times last week against SMU for failing to get the playoff uh, in a lot of time. So now it is a fourth down for Oklahoma on the UNT 11. Eric Moore has quarterbacked the Sooners most of the way today. However, Garrick McGee came in and really moved the team after uh, the Sooners were frustrated with the offense. But now Moore has played all of the second half. Jeffrey Alexander will try the field goal. This would be from the 18, making it a 28-yard field goal if he makes it. And he is accurate. A 28-yard field goal by Je uh, Jeremy Alexander. Oklahoma 37, North Texas 10. And it's now 37-10, Oklahoma. Alexander will be the next Uwe Von Schumann that kicked up here and kicked so well for a long time. The kicking game, as you know, is very, very important. I'll tell you this. Uh, uh, and here you see Boomer Sooner 
This is the, the schooner that turned over at the uh, at the Orange Bowl game and cost him 15 yards for a delay a game against Washington. That was very instrumental in in Washington winning that game in the in the uh, Orange Bowl some eight or ten years ago. Well, the Sooners head for the Big Eight Conference next week and a meeting with the Colorado Buffaloes. That'll be a great game. It's a night game here at Norman. They don't play many night games here, but that's a great game, and it looks like uh, Colorado's ahead 17-7 to uh, today against a very, very good Texas A&M team. Colorado, incidentally, has a Texas quarterback, Coy Detmer. I wonder if two Detmers will win the Heisman Trophy. That that would be the first time in history that that ever happened. You no, know, some of the some of the observers. How do you feel about it, Gil? You appraise players all the time. Some feel that he might be better than his brother. Well, I tell you, his brother played in a system uh, that was very suited for a quarterback. But I think what, what's going to happen here, back to our game, is I think we're finally going to get a chance to get return a kickoff here because he has to kick into the wind and he'll probably go down to about the two or three yard line. Curtis McKinney stays on his feet, makes a cut, battles his way to the 25. A fine return. Make that Tubby Colvin in place of McKinney. So Tubby Colvin on the return. And now let's take a look at the GTE stats through the third quarter. What, what's happening here is, is the time of possession has been pretty even, but the, 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 the rushing yards has just been an absolute one-way street. And, and when you're minus uh, anything in rushing and have some turnovers, you're not going to win many games. So it's a it's a credit that uh, that they stayed in, the Eagles stayed in the game as long as they have. Maybe the wind on our back, now we can get some points here. Most amazing thing is the time of possession is almost equal. First and ten. Gully throwing. Ooh. Incomplete. He called it. Right. Uh, Grimes uh, was the intended receiver, and Johnson had the coverage. He tried to step in front of him. There was a flag thrown. Darius Johnson is a very, very good defensive back. He's a, he's another Texas player that's uh, that runs on the uh, Sooner Sprint Relay team and uh, and placed, I believe, in the uh, the hundred meters in the Big Eight uh, conference last year. They had a timing day up here this spring, and he ran, I think, a 4:28:40 for the Pro Scouts. He's from Carroll, Texas. So he's hit with a penalty for pass interference. Now the Eagles will have the ball at their own 28-yard line. This may be the best field position we've had in the second half, I believe. Get that defensive arrest, too. Josh Gully at quarterback. Jason Mills out uh, with an injury. He has two weeks to heal before the Eagles play again. Quarterback draw. Josh Gully goes for maybe a yard, maybe the line of scrimmage. Well, here's where I'd like to see him take a and, and, and run a takeoff or a, a streak pattern because you've got the wind at your back and, and you've got to try to make a big play if you can just to get something going to, to have a carryover for uh, your next game two weeks from today. Burtis McKinney comes into the game now. He'll be a wide out, second down nine. We're in the fourth period here in Norman. Merle Herman and Gil Brandt with you. Ed Boudinero on the sideline. Second and nine. Doesn't go any place. Comer, who replaced Bo Harrison, brought down by Martin Chase, number 93, the left tackle. Comer is from Rockwall. Gained 4,510 yards in high school. Well, there's some good young players, as I've said before, on this team, and uh, I, I think this is a growing pain. You know, we talked about this on the way up yesterday. One of the things I think they should do is when a team goes into 1A, moves up, they ought to give them more scholarships for about two years. Gully has the right, you notice the right foot is up as he comes out of there after the snap throws, complete, and Mike Boone gets to about the 31. It'll be fourth down. Fourth down about five. Well, we're starting to see a lot of players uh, that we hadn't seen before. You know, Merle, something happened on the last series of downs that was very, very encouraging to me. Sterling Guest tried to go out onto the field. 
and, and was called back by the coaches. So I think that tells you a little bit about the determination that Sterling Guest has because uh, everybody thought he was out for the rest of the game, and here he's trying to sneak back in uh, to play. That's how badly he wants to play. Toby Golden to do the punting. P.J. Mills is back deep for Oklahoma. Golden will have the wind to his back on this kick. Belts it downfield. P.J. Mills, fair catches, 28-yard line. And so the Sooners take over after the 41-yard punt, and Oklahoma leads by 37-10. First down 10. There it is, 37-10 Oklahoma, Sooners ball, first down, 28-yard line. Eric Moore, the quarterback. Dang Moore breaking tackles. That's Gerald Moore across midfield of the 48-yard line. Hudson finally got him down. Boy, that guy is powerful, Gerald Moore. What, what's happening is they just, it's just a little uh, cross action here is what it is. And he, he is so strong uh, that he just uh, takes and uh, runs over people, keeps his legs moving. Uh, as I said earlier, he uh, reminds you a lot of Emmett Smith is that kind of a runner he is. Very strong-legged runner that has the ability to cut back. He gained 24 yards on the play to the 48-yard line of UNT. First down Sooners. Eric Moore goes to Allen, the tailback. Allen caught on the corner of the midfield stripe and thrown for a yard loss by Calvin Davis, number 37, Brett Renfro, 43, and Stephen Hunt, number 90. This is Calvin Davis that has apparently heard on this play. So here comes the hospital squad again. I'll tell you, one of the busiest guys on the field today has been Tim McLean. You know, I'm not trainer. sure the trainer shouldn't get the most valuable award, uh, award for today. He's been out there. He's ran a lot of miles out there today. He's gotten himself in shape. You know, it, we, that, it, it's, it's, it's unfortunate when things like this happen. But, you know, when you played three really tough games like this and then a fourth game, you know, people just get worn down is, is what, what happens. And when you're worn down, this is when some injuries start to take place. The only touchdown the Eagles have scored today was on a 54-yard pass from Jason Mills to Troy Redwine. And at that, and a two-point conversion at that time, tied the game at 10 with a minute 50 left to go in the first half. And then Oklahoma came down and scored with just 24 seconds left to go in the first half to take the lead at 17-10, and the Sooners have led ever since. Well, let me tell you something about this program here. Uh, you know, they're ranked 10th and 11th uh, uh, nationally this year, but over the last 28 years, they have won more games uh, they've been plus 50 percent every year for the for the uh, last 28 years so it, it, it this is a, a program with a great deal of tradition as you know we went into the coach uh, schnellenberger's office yesterday in the halls and uh, there's a lot of tradition on the walls uh, uh, what it amounts to and you know what gil the thing that's encouraging about that that's how it can be and that's what matt wants to accomplish with his program at UNT, and he's, he said, hey, we're in for the long haul commitment. We're in for excellence. And so Matt Simon keeps these guys going. Timeout called by Oklahoma as Eric Moore looked over the defense, wasn't quite uh, happy with what he saw. Merle, last week I had a chance to visit with Dr. Hurley. Uh, the president of the university, who I think has done an absolutely great job. Uh, I, I think he realizes that there's a mix between academics and ath athletics. And, and uh, I, I think he's very, very proud of the academic program that the Eagles have, that the University of North Texas has. And I, and I think he would really like to see the athletic program move forward. And I think the basketball program two years ago moved forward. And I think this football program is going to move forward, too. And, and with the right attitude and the right drive, it all can work, too. I mean, what is, what is there to say that you can't have a great academic institution and good sports team as well? Well, I, I'll say this. Uh, the University of North Texas, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is a very, very good academic institution. Well, I think we only have to look over that band and 
That tells you something about the great music department at uh, UNT. 26,000 students attest to it, I too, I'll tell you that. That's Aaron Woodard, a man of the future. A high schooler out of Alvarado, Texas, with hopes of playing a lot of football for UNT. Let's go back to play now. Eric Davis rolling, knocked out of bounds on the sideline. He's out of bounds around the 45. By the way, Calvin Davis, who left with the injury, has 10 tackles today, number 37. Well, you know, as a coach, as we see Matt Simon here as a coach, it really does your heart good when you see people hustling like they are down by 27 points. Uh, it, it, it tells you a little bit about the character of your football team is what it does. Third down five for Oklahoma. Shotgun. Harry Davis, low snap. Now he runs. Now he stopped. Justin, Justin Ray, Ray made a great play that time, <laughs> the middle linebacker. He occupied two people there. Well, I think that I think that it was a, a quarterback draw play because if you notice, both backs remained in there to block. And usually when both backs remain in the block, it's a quarterback draw. And and he tried to he tried to run it and a scramble and uh, and was uh, stopped for no gain. Good look at Justin Ray as he comes off the field. Brian Lewis to do the kicking now for Oklahoma on fourth down and ten. Brian Smith is back deep. He's at about the ten yard line. Lewis got the kick away and just barely. He called a he called a penalty on the play. Huh? They called a penalty on the play. <laughs> sure is a flag. Down. Yeah. Here's a replay. Uh, <laughs> they come in, they rush him from the left side, and uh, what happens here is that uh, 83 just, uh, I'm not sure the kicker didn't kick 83, but uh, it, that, that hopefully is only a five-yard penalty. I can't believe that it's a 15-yard penalty, so it still, still should be short of a first down. Mm. There's no way you can call this a, a roughing the kicker penalty. Chikori DeMard has been flagged twice. He's been coming from the left side. I mean, that's, that's been the pattern. That's what he's supposed to be doing, trying to block that kick. But you see, he's peeling. And, uh, obviously, he comes from the side, and we'll get the call here. Right into the kicker. Five-yard penalty. Repeat for a Well, I called one right. <laughs> I feel good. But, uh, you know, that, that those are... It's hard to understand why you call that penalty because uh, I really think Lewis uh, kicked him. Picky, 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 picky you on a little call like that. My goodness. 37 to 10, Oklahoma. <laughs> you know, one of the things, though, Gil, and this comes away and high and a fair catch call for it. Let's see where it comes down. It is into the end zone, so it will uh, be brought out to the 20-yard line. We'll uh, develop what the thought that we had there when we come back. That kick was 44 yards, and UNT will have the ball at the 20 when we come back after this. North Texas football is being brought to you in part by the Dr. Pepper Bottling Company of Texas. Ten minutes, ten seconds left to play in the game. UNT will have the ball first down on the Eagle 20-yard line. Merle, that's what you want to do on a punting situation. You want to get yourself back on a 10-yard line and signal for a fair catch, and, and it should go over your head. Don't don't go by beyond the 10-yard line. It goes over your head into the end zone, and you get the ball on the 20. A good, good play by Smith there. Josh Gully, quarterbacking. Throwing, blocked at the line of scrimmage, and did he try to catch that ball? Did it break loose? Did it? Is it fumbled? The ball is apparently live. 93, a defensive player apparently batted the ball up in the air and caught it. Chase, Chase. Martin Chase. Right. That ball was being battered all over the place. Right, I think we'll probably see it here. Gully just straightens up and tries to throw the ball, and, and uh, it's deflected and batted in the air. 
Watch. Here it is. He just straightens up and throws the ball, and, and, the, and those linemen just get their hands up in the air and bat it down. He, there you see a hand go up in the air and bat it down. And yep. it, it's a lineman's delight to, to intercept the ball or to run with a ball. I'll tell you, all of a sudden, they think they're fullbacks out there. And this guy thinks he's a halfback with all these fancy steps he's putting on here. That was Manuel who got his hand on the ball. Now Garrick McGee is coming at quarterback on a first and goal for Oklahoma at about the eight-yard line of UNT. To the run, and it's Michael Rose, number 20, the fullback, to about the five. Rose is another Texan from Abilene Cooper. Well, there's a lot of good football players from Texas on this squad. As I said before, I think they have 41 players, of which 12 are starters, and that's a pretty good ratio. Second down, goal to go outside the UNT five-yard line. Rose, 5'10", 218 pounds. Frazier is his partner as a running back. And this is Frazier. Boy, the pop put on him at about the four-yard line, belted him back. And it was Justin Ray, 51, and Clay Jennings, 48. Well, let me say something about rankings. You know, we talk about rankings, 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 rankings. Uh, the University of Oklahoma is the top-ranked team for the number of weeks that they have been ranked number one. Uh, since the polls have been in vogue, 72 weeks that the University of Oklahoma has been ranked in the number one position. It is now third down goal to go. 27-point lead for Oklahoma. They're in the shotgun. Moore, or rather uh, McGee. Touchdown to James Allen. That's just the back cutting out there. They, you know, they, they do it two ways. They block, or they have the back cut out, and the back cut out, and uh, it's very hard for the linebacker to cover a back coming out of there, especially when they're tired. The middle linebacker probably has to make that decision to cover him, and uh, it, it's very hard for a middle linebacker that probably runs 4'8 or 4'9 to cover a 4'4 four, four, uh, running back is what it amounts to. Very tough play to cover. Alexander for the extra point try. And it is 44 to 10, Oklahoma. Here we see a, a shotgun formation. Here's the back. He just checks, comes out of there. They got a blitz on is what they have, a corner blitz. And uh, he catches it and runs it in for a touchdown. James Allen from Winniewood, Oklahoma. And he hands the ball to the official. Do you notice that? No spiking the ball, just hands it to the official. He doesn't want to get caught for that penalty. It's a good thing to keep in mind because uh, at a most critical time, sometimes the exuberance of the young fella gets away from him, and so uh, they get hit with a penalty. 55-27 Notre Dame over Texas today, and Wisconsin shut out SMU. Kansas defeated Houston up at Lawrence, Kansas. Kansas off to a 4-0 start. Nebraska defeats Pacific 49-7. And Ohio State, number eight in the country, over Pittsburgh at halftime. And at halftime, Colorado has a six-point lead over the Aggies. Well, that's, uh, that's scoring a lot of points against the Aggie defense because the Aggies have a great defense, and it says something about the Colorado Jeremy offense is what it does. Jeremy Alexander teeing the ball up. Again, here's where I think you got a chance for a, uh, a return right here, uh, and you never know. You might break one here any day now. Coleman and McKinney are back in the goal line for the Eagles. This kick goes well back into the own end zone. Wind or no wind, Alexander put a lot of foot and leg into that one. Well, uh, when you look at the Oklahoma kicking team, the kickoff team, there's a lot of ones and twos in there, a lot of fast people covering kicks. And when you have that situation, it, it's very, very hard to, to run back to get a good return because this is a speed team is what it is. You know, over the years, even going back to Bud Wilkinson's reign here at Oklahoma, he really went big time with the speed. He, 
fact, he, as I recall, he would recruit fullbacks and, and even big halfbacks and make linemen out of them. They recruit athletes is what they do. First and 10 on the 20. DeAndre Mason. About two, maybe three. We're, we're finally starting to see some, uh, some backup players in here right now uh, for the Sooners is what it amounts to. Mason is from the colony. You know, we talk about, I know we've talked about uh, uh, the Sooners a lot today and the accomplishments that they have made, but this is exactly what Matt Simon is telling to his young players. You want to, we want to build a program that is consistent with uh, the uh, big guys that we're playing. That pass complete to the 40-yard line. And it's Mike Boone who's from Queen City, Texas. Wendell Davis, number 28, the coverage after a 16-yard pickup. That's a confidence builder for Gully right there. Yep. You know, that's that's his first big pass that he's hit. You know, he's hit a lot of those little dinks and dunks, but this was about a 20-yard pass, and uh, it, it uh, that was a good play there. First down on the 40. The pitch. Mason the run. Breaking tackles and plugging ahead, getting a few yards out to the 43. And this, this is a great, great effort uh, and great effort by Mason here. And this is another freshman that they got in there playing is what it is. He just he just outruns a guy, breaks a tackle and turns it on upfield. I'll tell you, that's a good play. Good effort. Very, very good effort. You know, it just shows you the character of the players that they have out here playing today. Second down. Flag, completed pass, and it's Chakori DeMart on the reception. I think he called the uh, right tackle here for really procedure is what happened. Cedric Stevens on the coverage. You know, what's, what what happens is the, the defensive linemen are just really teeing off on the... Uh, Here's his stance as he has. He has that left foot uh, stuck out there, and it's a Bernie Kozar stance. And as I said before, I think that a quarterback feels he can get out quicker because of that. Second down. Second down and about 12 as Gully to throw and completes it to Mason. Mason at the near side crosses the 45 and is out of bounds at about the 47. Chased out by Broderick Simpson, number 51, the weak side linebacker. Merle, we've kind of watched Mason grow. He, you know, he, uh, it, it seems that every week that he's in there and he gets an opportunity, he seems to do just a little bit better. And I think he's uh, done a very, very good job here today after Harrison has gotten hurt. He has excellent speed. He can fly. Third down, three. 47 yard line of UNT. Nice little drive going here for the Eagles. They don't make it on that one, however, as Mason was brought down by Broderick Simpson, 51. Well, Broderick Simpson is uh, one of the few regulars that's still in there, and, and uh, as we've said about 15 times, he is really a football player. He's about a 210-pound player, but uh, he really, really plays well. He's got such great speed and, and reaction. You know, uh, when, when a linebacker has speed and reaction, he's really tough. P.J. Mills will go deep for the punt from Toby Gowen. P.J. from Portsmouth, Virginia. We have a timeout call. I think they had too many men on the field is what they did. I think they had 12 men on the field. Oklahoma. Howard's not very happy about that. That special teams coach will hear about that. Uh, He'll have to sit in that office and uh, listen to a lecture and inhale that aroma from that uh, cardinal tobacco uh, that he showed you yesterday. <laughs> that's one thing. That's another thing he brought along with him. Yeah. Well, he said he's almost out of it there. Five minutes, 57 seconds left to play, and Sooners lead by a score of 44 to 10. The Rams will be available for 
Gil, this is your subject. This is ours, and uh, as I said earlier, it's an amazing uh, stat. They're the fourth leading uh, winning team of all time. They've won uh, 672 games, I think, uh, over a period of 100 years' time. Uh, so when you're up in that category or in that class, uh, that, that's very, very good. It's interesting, those teams that are in the first five positions, uh, we're not surprised by those at all, any one of the five. As I said earlier, I think that they've uh, they've won 667 games uh, coming into this year. Going back to do the putting. Sends it downfield to P.J. Mills, who's going to let it roll toward the end zone. But it is going to be down at about the three, possibly the two. Our next game on television will be two weeks from today at uh, Nevada, Reno. We'll be on the air at 3 o'clock Central Time on Channel 27, KDFI. Channel 27 bringing you all UNT games this year. We've mentioned before, to our knowledge, the only school that's ever televised all of their entire schedule live. And you know, everybody that I talk to, that you talk to, they, they, they comment on it. what a great thing this is to have all of your games and and, and what a uh, stroke of genius, I guess, it takes on the part of the administration to do something like this. McGee is now the quarterback as Frazier runs in the end zone and is brought down almost in the end zone. Philip Armour, number 67, made the tackle. Merle, you know, we've been talking about Oklahoma and Oklahoma football and what they what's happened to them. Uh, this is another something that special that's happened to them. As long as they've been playing here, they've never had four home games in a row to start the season, which they have this year. That ball is almost at the goal line after that loss. It is second down and 13. A little pop up the middle trying to get some daylight from Michael Rose, number 20, the fullback. Merle, you don't think they're going to get back in that shotgun and try to pass from here, do you? I was surprised they ran a wide play. <laughs> And out, out of the end zone. Willis Hudson making the defensive play. Of course, if you have a 44 to 10 lead, I guess you can try about anything you want to try. Yeah, but we're going to get good field position here. Four minutes, 40 seconds left to play. So Sunday is wide to the left now for Oklahoma. As Garrett McGee and then here goes the chase. Frazier going to go all the way. 95-yard run. 96-yard run. Well, there's a case where they, you know, your defense is tired. They just don't wrap up. And all of a sudden, you got Frazier, who's a pretty good back. He just takes off and runs. And it's a, it's a foot race, and nobody can catch him. After making two fine defensive plays, that really stings, you know. You make that de defensive play and throw them for a loss at the, about the one-foot line and then hold them pretty well on the second down, and then Frazier breaks loose and goes 96. That may be an Oklahoma record uh, as far as uh, a rushing touchdown is concerned. Extra point try by Alexander. That's certainly the longest of Frazier's career. And it's 51 to 10, Oklahoma. Four minutes, 10 seconds left to go in the ball game, and we'll return right after this. The Sooners have rolled in the second half, and with four minutes plus to go, 51 10, Oklahoma. With this Here's big the play. Run. It's, it's a kind of a counter sweep right. And uh, no, it isn't either. He actually breaks it outside. I think it was a play that meant to, to be run inside, and he just broke it to the outside is what he did. And it, it's a foot race, and he runs away from Washington. Washington is just not uh, quite fast enough to catch up with him. Alexander's kickoff will be returned from two yards deep of the end zone by Tubby Coleman. And Coleman breaking tackles coming to the near side. It's the 25, the 30, 35, and out of bounds. But about the four-yard line hit and the there. flag. They got it. They got it. It was a late hit. They hit him out of bounds. 42-yard return on that kick. 
Here, Cedric uh, Stevens may have caught the flag. You know, Howard's not going to be very happy. No coaches are happy uh, over plays that uh, result in stupid penalties. And when you hit somebody out of bounds like that, that's obviously late. Uh, that just is not very smart. And they really don't care what the score is. No, uh, it doesn't make any difference what the score is because what it does is is, is, is some one day you're going to get it when it's seven to six. This is a this is great effort here uh, uh, by the return man. He brings it up the middle and then breaks outside. Actually runs into his own man number 81 and slows people down, and then breaks it to the outside and turns up field. You know, that's and that, another thing about that, Merle, that's how people get hurt. You know, they get blocked into the bench. You know, hopefully you've got one of your guys there that's going to catch it. But I'll tell you what, everybody scatters. It's first down for UNT at the 43-yard line of Oklahoma. Josh Gully is quarterback most of the second half as Mills has been on the injured list. Gully to throw. Incomplete. Did somebody tip that yeah, ball? Was, just it, away from it, it. I think it was tipped again at the line of scrimmage there. Those are big defensive linemen. They got six foot five people in there. And when they get their hands up there, it's uh, it's tough to throw it over. You've got to cut block some of those people is what you have to do to keep them from getting their hands up in the air. Second and ten for the Eagles on the 43-yard line of the Sooners. We're down near the four-minute mark to play in this game. And Oklahoma's leading 51 to 10 after leading at the half by 17 to 10. There's that Utah shuffle pass again. Just got it away. Mason was on the receiving end, but it goes for a loss. Who did develop it? Eddie Grosscup? Is that the guy that did that? Jack, Jack Curtis and Eddie Grosscup, yes. And then Jim Sutherland used it a lot at, at Washington State. Uh, later on with a with a wide receiver by the name of Hugh Campbell who I think at the time set the record for the most catches in a season which was about 60 and at that time was great and now it wouldn't even place in the top 20. Isn't it amazing the way modern day coaches pull some of those things up from years ago. Gully going long and it is incomplete to Coylan Grimes number 85. Now there was a well thrown pass that was a very very well thrown pass. He squared up and he threw that ball and he released it. That's the kind of pass you like to see. Larry Bush, number 31, had the coverage. It is fourth down and 13 for UNT. Gowen comes on to do the kicking. Toby is a junior from Jacksonville, Texas. And P.J. Mills is back deep. Going, trying to keep that ball from going into the end zone, but he sort of kicked a, a low liner, 46 yards, no return. Well, the wind takes it and uh, is what happens, but if you can kick that ball out of sight, if you're trying to kick for the corner, you've got to aim it that way, and it, uh, it just didn't look like he was uh, really uh, aimed to the sideline uh, enough to uh, make it go out of bounds inside the 10. Garrick McGee will be the quarterback. There is Eric Moore. They alternated in the uh, SMU game. They both played just about equal time, as I recall. Yeah, they did, and, and really their stats were pretty much equal uh, coming into this game. They didn't have a very good uh, uh, completion percentage. Rose, number 20, stopped by Hudson, 56, and Hill, number 45. If I know Howard, that's going to be a lot of running plays right now, and there's they're going to be running plays inside because I don't think Howard is uh, really trying to score another touchdown. Keith Sparks, number 29, from Fort Worth, Nolan, is now in in the backfield for Oklahoma. I believe uh, we're going to have Rose and Sparks as our running backs now. Two minutes, 35 seconds left to play in the game. That is Rose brought down by Hill. Should be enough for a first down for Oklahoma. It has been an all Oklahoma second half after the Sooners scored with 24 seconds left in the first half to go ahead. It was tied up at 10. 
with uh, 24 seconds left in the first half when the Sooners scored to go ahead 17-10. And they've shut out the Eagles since then, and the Sooners have marched on to 51 points. That's Rose. Rose to the 32. All right, today's Village Ford UNT player of the game is Brett Renfro. Ten tackles, one sack. Very strong in that first half, particularly. And he'll be back again next year. He's uh, one of those young players that, uh, although he is a junior, but he'll be back again next year, and I think uh, great things are expected from him next year. He's from Point Pilot. Pilot Point. Pilot Point. Up the middle comes Rose. Terry Watson, 29, the strong safety brought him down, but he gets to midfield. It's one of those good East Texas towns. Pizzanti is now in there, number 30, not number 20. We had 20 rows. That's Pizzanti, number 30, as you see him in the huddle. Right in the middle of the huddle. Yeah, there's a lot of young players in there now, especially offensive linemen that are in there that uh, are getting their big chance right now. A minute 10 left of the game. Oklahoma in possession at midfield. Just the dive straight ahead. I believe that's Pizzanti again. What's happening, Merle, is they're just they're just overpowering a tired defense right now is, uh, is is what they're doing. Those are big, big, big offensive linemen, and they're pretty good, and uh, it's just tough to, to, to stay in there for four quarters. 42 seconds left of the game. Sooners leading 51 to 10. But I don't think anybody's quit. That's that's the encouraging thing. When they look at the tapes tomorrow, I think they'll see that uh, no one quit, and that's, that's what they care about. Oklahoma runs the ball again. With Keith Sparks, number 29, and Justin Ray, the middle linebacker from Cleveland, makes the tackle for UNT, and we have 24 seconds left. The clock is stopped to move the chains, but we'll start again as soon as the ball is set. The chains are set, 13 yards on that carry. Clock running at the 29-yard line is where the line of scrimmage is. And this could be the last play. We may have already seen the last play of the game. Oklahoma said, no, we're not going to run another play. We'll let the clock run out. And the Sooners have been undefeated in their pre-Big 8 schedule. Right. They start for real next Saturday night here at uh, Old Field. Should be a great game. Two very good teams. So the Sooners, who led by only 17 to 10 at the half, win this game by a score of 51 to 10. The lone UNT touchdown scored by, Te uh, by uh, Troy Redwine on a 54-yard pass and run from Jason Mills in the second quarter. Well, that's uh, four touchdown passes in two weeks for Troy Redwine. That's uh, that, that's pretty good production is what it is. All right, let's go down to Ed Budenero. Ed, thank you very much, Merle. We're Coach Matt Simon, and Matt, this bye week coming up couldn't probably come at a better time. you got a lot of nicks and bruises, a lot of guys banged up. What will the rest do for you to give you a chance to regroup? Well, hopefully it will. Hopefully we'll get some of the players back. You know, we came in this game with six uh, down six starters, and uh, and we nicked up a couple of more. So we've uh, we've got some work to do. Not appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good trip back. Back up to you, Merrill. Gil. Okay. Thank you, Ed. So the final score of the Sooners 51 and the Eagles 10. And we'll be back after these messages coming up from your local station. <laughs> 